Welcome to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we're live at the Aspen Valley Polo Club. Field number one today, and this is our Saturday polo, and we always have a great uh, game for you today. Man, I think this might be the, the frosting on the cake. It's a good way to end it because we have a, two strong teams, and just for the love of it, and some great awards over there. We have the Britos Awards, so that's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you join us for our trophy presentation. But as the players are getting their final warm-ups done, wow, get ready for this. We got the Young Guns coming in with the World Pole League Purple. And uh, I see Grant Gansey right there behind me getting ready. But we have Enrique Bueno playing the number one, one of our producers here at CTV Sports. And uh, if you watched last week, Enrique played, scored two, three goals. And, uh, but the, uh, the, pole, the World Pole League White, they wanted a rematch. And I'll explain a little bit about that as we go through it. Playing the number two is going to be Anthony Davron. Played very well last week. Anthony, uh, he uh, knows the game of polo, grew up around it. And I hadn't played in a while, but, man, just like riding a bike, you put him on the horse, and he was right back at it. He'll play number two. Then Santos Tato Bellini will play the number three. He played last week with Anthony and Enrique. And, uh, well, they're going to bring in Double G, Grant Gansey. So he'll captain the team at the number four position, and now here's the reason why, because they have put together a stellar World Polo League white team, and well, Carol Farnsworth is going to play number one. You know Carol. I told these boys be ready, be careful. She's a great rider. She makes she plays really clean plays. She goes to the man first. She makes some awesome hooks. So you got to watch out for Carol, and she will score goals. Also. Coming in and making his debut this summer, and I'm so happy that he is back in town playing the number two, Sterling Jones. You probably see Sterling play in a lot of our beach polo, snow polo. He travels around. He's part of the family at the Grand Champions Polo Club, our sister club, and the Aston Valley Polo Club, and CTV Sports. So it's great to have Sterling back coming in from L.A. He's been very busy and uh, working there in the movie business. And, uh, well... Get ready, because we got Mark Gansey, a.k.a. the Cobra, coming in, and he's playing the number three position, and he's going to play with Juan Bellini. So, when these two guys team up together, you know they are very strong, and going up against their sons today, against Grant and Santos. So, I think they're bragging rights today. They're going to go for it. This should be a fun game. We're here on the number one field where it all started. Remember, this is the Aspen Valley Polo Club, our 10th year anniversary. I got Gaston Dorniak over here, who's going to be doing all of our uh, today. And uh, Gaston, why don't you come on over here while, the, while they're warming up? Come on over. Gaston Dorniak here, my man right here. Take the mic here, man. Make sure the mic faces the, the uh, speaker right there. And say hello to everybody. Tell us about the summer. Oh, the summer! This summer was great, incredible. The the weather uh, coming with 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 all the organization all the time. The field was amazing. The the polo players, everybody. For me, one of the most incredible season in in, in ever. Uh, but not then. Eh? It's not the end. The season continue in, in Grand Champions, Santa Rita, and and all the season for 2024. You got it. You done an amazing job, my man. Thank you, Gaston. Is all the, he's done all the umpire. We've been helping him out from the side, but we don't need much help. So well done, my brother. We love you. Good luck today. This is battle of the families. Having about with Gaston, of course, one of our top umpires and uh, managers, also with the World Polo League. Gaston does a fabulous job in there. He's umpired all around the world, Mr. Dorniak, and uh, we are pleased to have him here. He's been umpiring all summer long. And as you know, we have been using the technology. I want to thank everybody in the studios doing a great job down there. When needed, we're using it for the triggers. You remember the triggers. If we need to use it, we can go back and see if a goal is scored. Anytime two players come together, two four-legged athletes come together on a play, it might be a little difficult. We can send it to the studios. They can re-look at it in, in all different angles and slow-mo, fast-mo, medium-mo. You can get it all. There, and they've been doing a great job. Also, when the ball goes out of bounds, and then any unsportsmanlike conduct, so you can use that and review it. You need to embrace the technology. We use it at a high level, the highest level in the game of polo around the world during our winter season. 
And uh, so if you want to keep, keep, keep uh, check out that the World Polo League and, of course, uh, highest rated polo outside of Argentina at 26 goals. And we're already getting ready for the 2024 season. At, that league has built to the highest level and just highest standard of polo in America. And we've used the technology at a higher level. My executive producer, Mike Ferreira, they built an amazing studio down in southern Florida. And the whole team, and you know who you are, that works for CTV Sports. We all work together in there. And it's been uh, it's just been great for the game of polo. It's changed the way the game of polo is looked at, the way it's perceived, and the way it's called. It's taking the, the uh, taking the calls to a higher level when you can be 120 percent with all the video that we use. So, and we've uh, we've added some procedures that have changed the game also, and that's what it's all bettering bettering the game at a higher level. So it looks like we got uh, yeah, it looks like we got our Betty on the field here. So I'm going to get to my spot. And let's get ready. This is just for the love of it, and we're live from the Aspen Valley Polo Club, field number one, where it all started 10 years ago. As we're on our 10th year anniversary, and uh, Mark and Melissa Gandy done an amazing job bringing polo to the area, and the valley, as we say, has embraced the polo. So, we can line them up or go right at it, whatever you guys want. Oh, there he is. Wait a minute, come over here real quick before you get out there. Say hello to everybody on the close-up here. Everybody, welcome back. Sterling Jones. Sterling, good to see you, my man. Hey, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Glad to be here. Good to see you. Just flew in. You ready to go? Flew in last night. Ready to go. I got a beautiful horse. Beautiful day. Let's have some fun. Yeah, I know you. You're on a good team. Good luck. Thanks. We're all poly like Sterling Jones right here. Great to see you, Sterling. Good luck today. He's playing with a very strong team, as Sterling knows. Juan Bellini, who actually was his coach early on, Juan taught uh, Sterling actually how to ride and play. And so Sterling, Sterling Juan and, I won, and Vinny won the first uh, polo cup. Oh, okay. And you, okay. So Kale Newman, just give me some information. Sterling, Vinny, Juan, and Juan, and they won. And and Kale, they won the uh, they won the first polo pride. I think you made a penalty, didn't you? Didn't make the shootout. No, no, that was it. The that second was one. Good. All right. So they won the first one. You want to line them up? Let's line them up. Do a proper introduction because this is a proper Saturday here at the Aspen Valley Pole Club, and it's just for the love of it. And there's some great awards over there. We have the Britos Awards, and so you want to win these. And they're signed, sealed, and delivered. And I know they're going to want them. We'll go with the uh, our World Pole League White. Of course, ladies always first. Please put your hands together. She's been fabulous all season long, working with the Polo on Demand program. Put your hands together for Carol Fonsworth. Carol, good luck today. This is going to be a big one today. You know you got a tough job out there, but she's always ready to go. We just saw him on the close-up, and we're glad to have him back. He just flew in, playing the number two. Please put your hands together for Sterling Jones. Sterling, welcome back. Good luck today here for the World Polo League White. Ah, well, the two very strong players here. And, well, Mark Ganzi, a.k.a. the Cobra, and I think he's going to want to be flashing the Cobra today. You're going to need it today, Mark, because they're going to be hustling you. And perfect guy to have at the number four position, director of operations, former eight-goal player. Get behind him with the pink helmet, always on Juan Bellini. And as I said, he coached Sterling. He's also played a lot of polo with Mark and, of course, Carol. Here they come, though, the Young Guns, World Polo League Purple, playing the number one. One of our producers for CTV Sports. Put your hands together for Enrique Bueno. He scored three goals last week. He's ready to go. He's sticking ball all week long. Now, playing the number two, who played very strong polo last week. Hasn't been on in a while, but it looked like he was riding a bike last week. Anthony Deveron, welcome back, Anthony. Good luck today. And now the two... Players that want bragging rights today, playing the number three. He's been playing all season long. I love the way he's been playing. Put your hands together for Santo Tato Bellini and captain in the team. And he is a true captain. The, and here we go, playing the number four. Please put your hand together for the ambassador of Casablanca, number four, Grant Ganzi, double G. And he's looking for bragging rights today also as he plays against the Cobra. So, this should be a fun game. We play right here for Chuckers of Polo, and it's going to be good. This is going to be a good one. As I said, the uh, the four young guns in World Polo League Purple 
They uh they've been they've been sick and bone actually. Enrique was here all week long. He rode with Santos, so he should be tuned up as he played last week. And I said Anthony Dever just did a great job last week, and he hadn't played in a while, but he got right back on it. Look at this, Sterling Jones is going to come out with the first ball of the day. Sterling on the gray pony. Now he finds the Cobra, and Mark's not going to wait around here. Cobra with the shot on goal. And the Cobra is going to strike early, and this is what you want to do, World Polo League White. Watch out, because the Cobra's on fire early, and a nice pass there by Sterling Jones. So we'll give the assist to Sterling, and our first goal of the day to Gansey, and that's going to be Mark. Win the bowling, get that offensive attack. As I said, remember the number one field here, a little bit shorter. And a little bit tighter, not as wide, but man, the goals go back and forth. We've seen a lot of goals scored on this field. And our four Chucker Polo, it has been very quick. We played yesterday. Also, we played a round robin here. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And we had a lot of rain, and the field looks fabulous. On the far side, picked up here by Bellini and Santos. He's been playing stellar polo this season. Tato. Taking it in here. Well done, Santos. Keep it in front. Cobra trying to get there. He does on the back shot. Bounces off a pony. Carroll will leave this one for Juan Bellini. Juan's going to get hassled there by Enrique. Well done, Enrique. He's going to slow. Oh, look at this, Enrique. Bueno trying to steal it away from Bellini. Nice try, Enrique. Takes it to the far side, and it's going to be Juan, and he'll control the team from the number four position. He's going to find the Cobra. Mark Gansey already on taking it forward here good play here by mark mark now looking for carol that ball will it stay on the field carol looking for the deep neck shot and did she get it what a try there by carol fonsworth and everybody gets a piece of that one and it's going to go just wide so on the knocking first knocking of the day it's going to be grant gansey as I said, the ambassador for Casablanca, representing Casablanca at a high level. And here it comes Enrique. He gets a piece of that one, takes it down the field. Deveron going to put some pressure on the back shot. It's going to be Mark and Santos. They come together right there. Two players, Carroll, nice ride off. Loose ball play, Leah Carroll in there battling it out on the sword fight. It's going to be Anthony and Enrique now stolen away by Bellini. Juan. One, ooh, and uh, Enrique with 2.15 on the clock. Enrique Bueno is going to get caught on the reaching foul there. You can see right there that Juan had the ball on the right side. Enrique kind of reached under. But you know what, Enrique, I like this play because you got to press Bellini. You got a hard job today playing against number four. Former eight-goal player now on three. All right, he's going to send everybody forward. Here comes Juan. Juan going for two points here, and look at this. Everybody going very fast down inside the 60, and he gets backed up cleanly now. Nicely hit there by Devron. Anthony looking for Santos. Santos is going to back that one back in. Oh, well met here by Grant Gansey. Double G is going to turn the defense into offense, and here he goes. Santos Bellini, the dynamic duo for the World Pole League Purple. Mark's going to get back quickly on the Bay Pony. Good D there by the Cobra. That ball will stay right in the middle. It's going to be Juan Bellini. Juan's going to change the field here, and I think he's got the Cobra all by himself. Yes, he does, and here comes Mark. Gansey now. He's got Carroll in front. Gansey's going to control it back to the center. Drags it inside. A little light. Turn around cleanly by Bellini. Santos. 120 on the clock. Left in there for Grant Gansey, double G. Now he'll go for two points. Anything scored from half field, remember, beyond half field, we were two points. Enrique Bueno gives a piece of it. Now it's going to be Grant Gansey. Oh, Grant, that ball's got eyes. Double G with a beautiful shot from about the 60-yard line, and that's going to get the equalizer and make it one-to-one -one as we click down just under a minute, about 54 seconds on the clock. We might get one more bowl in. We will see as they come back to the center. Remember, we'll switch directions. Looks like the Cobra's going to make it back. He says he's going to go for it. And whistle on the play.
35 seconds. 35 seconds left, guys, in his first chucker play. Five till the morning bell. Here we go. That ball's put in play. And, ooh, there we go. 30 seconds. Grant Gansey, he's got Brain up. Bueno out in front. Enrique, if he can run this one down, he needs to go from left to right. Enrique slows it up. Shot on goal, Bueno. Oh, look at Santos Bellini, though. And did Bellini finish that one? Yes, he did. So Santos Bellini with a great finish there. Bueno hits it to the right side, but it looked like Santos took it out of the air on a half volley, and that'll make it two to one. Put your hand together, Aspen Valley. We're going to send everybody off for some fresh ponies. That's our first chucker of four. A very clean, open game. Two to one. We'll be right back on CTV Sports. Welcome back, everybody. CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. We're uh, live from the Ask Valley Polo Club. Field number one. And a great start here. Two to one. We got the World Polo League purple. And that's going to be with Enrique Bueno playing one. Anthony Deron playing the number two. Tato Bellini playing the number three. And Grant Ganzi, captain of the team for the number four position. Grant with one goal and Bellini with one right at the end. Volleyed it, shot by Enrique, it was going wide, and Santos with a heads-up second effort play just fired it away. And then Grant and Mark Ganzi uh, scoring for, for the World Pole League White, where we have Carroll Farnsworth playing the number one, Sterling Jones playing the number two. He had the assist. Uh, Mark Ganzi playing the number three, and Juan Bellini playing the four. First chucker. Four chuckers of polo. We're in our second chucker. So thank you for joining us here on CTV Sports. We have our players warming their horses up. Remember tomorrow, as we're going to start out with three finals for you. And, uh, of course, remember, everything to support the Aspen Valley Hospital Foundation, our triple header. Summer Polo Charity Classic. We're going to have the Silver Queens uh, Invitational Final with Santa Rita against Polo for Christ. We're going to have the Carbondale Classic with Tonko against Mountain Chevrolet. And then we're going to have our final game, final final, just for the thrill of NetJets ST8 Polo. So you can join us tomorrow for Polo all day long, a Polo extravaganza, and we'll be live at the McClure River Ranch field number one. Here we go, though, at the Aston Valley Polo Club field number one, and this guy's been all over the ball early, and that's Mark Ganzi. Cobra, he's got room to work here, so he's going to keep it to himself. Well done, Mark. Nobody's coming to him yet with a purple jersey. Now he's going to shoot it. Still has control. 
Takes it forward. Good ball control here. I love the little chestnut mare with the bald face. Gansy now with the next shot looking for Carroll. That ball will stay on the field. Yes, he gets turned around by Anthony. Mark's going to get in there. Grant Gansy, Malbellini, and they move it forward. It's going to be Anthony on the breakaway. Well done, Anthony. Devon, but here comes Carroll. Anthony tries to pick up the bouncing ball. Picked up by the Cobra. He'll drag it back on defense and regroup. Takes it forward, hits the near side back shot. Juan Bellini trying to get there early, but it's going to be Tato Bellini. Now Juan, Papa Juan, the two Bellinis. They played hard against each other yesterday. Now going at it. Nice little play here by Juan Bellini. He's going to turn it up quickly, looking for Mark. Can he get there? Carroll, though, is going to sneak through. Nice hook in there by Devron, but Mark Gansey's going to pick up the loose ball play. Number three, bounces off a pony. Bad luck. Turned in now by Tato. Santos, Bellini, take it in the corner, and now they leave it for Grant. Grant, he gets picked up there. The two father-son combinations going at it. Grant against Mark, Tato against Juan. Serling takes a swipe at it, but that's okay because Carroll's going to fall into the rumble seat here. Carroll now trying to take it back to the center. Gets a couple nice shots, overrides, and a clean play here by Bellini. Santos with room to work. Santos, and he's got uh, Enrique Bueno out in front. Santos back to the inside, keeps it moving. He'll override, and here comes Juan, Papa Juan. Turns it back inside. Grant Mark's going to go forward. Carol's going to fall into the rumble seat. Now Juan will send maybe send her forward. Juan from way out looking for Sterling. Jones, he's going to find the Cobra, though. Mark on the near side. And Devron trying to lean way out in front there. But that ball is going to go ahead and trickle across the line. And Mark will get his second goal and the equalizer here, making it 2-2. Two to two As we move in here for the second chucker. So, evened up. World Pole League purple. World Pole League white. And... Back to the center we will go. Remember, here at the number one field in Aspen. Not that Bolins are really important on, on, on all fields, but on this field, as I said, a great place to learn, watch, and play the game of polo. It gets you up close and personal. Right now you need to have possession. Juan Bellini's going to get it. Looking for the Cobra again. you got to watch out for that dynamic duo. Well read here by Grant Gansey. He'll open that one up, and here's uh, my no, here's my second. Oh, as well, the new Bellinis come together right there. Loose ball play. Mark's going to get a piece of it. Ooh, well done, Grant. He bounces it off his pony there. Mark is going to turn it back. Now Grant will turn it around. Bellini gives him a rub. Santos falls into the rumble seat. Everybody looking for room to work. Well done, Tato. He's going to have to deal with the Cobra here, though. One minute left here in this second chucker. Well done, Gansey. Mark to the inside. That's going to give Bellini an opportunity. He's got Sterling going forward here. Sterling, keep going. Here it comes. Sterling, there's the pass. Ooh, it bounces off of Sterling. Sterling on the gray mare. The give and go now from Bellini to Gansey, and it'll be Grant. Double G, keeping an eye on Juan Bellini. He says, I'm going to fire it from way out. That's a nice pass, Grant. That might go on its own. But the Cobra is going to clean it up. And here comes your 30-second warning bell as World Pole League White will control down in the corner. Juan Bellini keeping it moving here. He's got, he's got the Cobra going forward here. Now he's going to take care of, Juan, of Grant, though. He gets away from him, back to the center. Looks like Mark should have an opportunity. Sterling leaves it for Mark. Now they got Carroll on the move. Carroll finds her right in front. Can she beat the clock? Nice hook by Devron. Well done by Grant. Now Juan Bellini, who started the play, right in front of goal. Devron with the bat, and that'll end it right there. So no goal. No goal as that ball is right in front. It will give the World Pro League White a bit of an advantage here. Starting the third chucker, we will have a bowl in right there in front of that far post. Gaston Dorniak will get them lined up. We'll get everybody on some fresh four-legged athletes, and we'll be right back for chucker number three.
All right, welcome back, everybody. CTV Sports. Here we go. Third trucker action, two to two. The battle of the World Polo League. World Polo League White with Carroll Hardwork playing the number one. Sterling Jones back in the saddle, as we say. Been very busy working in L.A. And uh, great to see him stop in for this very special, special game. And also play with Mark Ganzi and Juan Bellini. We have not seen them team up this season. They've been playing against each other all season long. So it's good to see them all teamed up and ready to go. And it looks like uh, we go off, get off the boards there, guys, if possible. If you don't mind, leave there. It'll be all right. Yeah. All right, so keeping an eye on everything. All right, here we go. With the Pearl World Pole League Purple, of course, Enrique Bueno playing the number one. No goals yet. Playing the number two, Anthony Dever, doing what he does well. He's been making a lot of hooks, bumps, moving the ball. And then it's been the dynamic duo of Santos Bellini and Greg Ganzi. And very similar as they're going to take this one and bowl it in down there. And here we go as Bellini's going to win the bowl in. Oh, and bad luck there is Grant. You can see him grab his helmet. He was actually going to steal that one away. In a good spot there, too, double G, but just kind of popped off his mallet and went in, but he in the right place at the right time. So that'll make it 3-2, to two, and we'll give that one to Juan Bellini, and he'll get his first goal of the day. The other two goals scored by Mark Ganzi, and on the other side, Santos Bellini and Grant Ganzi, now they only had one unanswered goal in the second chucker. Mark scored, and they... Uh, no goals, though, by the World Pole League Purple. So let's see if they can get it going again. Cobra. Going to spin it all the way around. I like that little move. Now the give and go. Looking for Carroll. Carroll, she'll get out in front. Pull the team. Hang on there, Anthony. Good riding, Anthony. Well done, number two. That's the way you ride them. A little fresh today, as we said. We had a cool weather yesterday. We had some rain blow through. So the ponies will be a little fresh right there, but Anthony Dever riding that one out well. Look at this, Santos Bellini on the breakaway once, twice. Good ball control, Tato, Tato, Tato. Look for the finish, Santo. Oh, leaves it on the doorstep, and here comes Juan Bellini, his papa. He's gonna take it out now. He's got Cobra going forward. Mark, this has been working well. Now Grant's gonna get on the scene. Anthony though in place here. Cobra's going to come in behind now. Anthony going for the ride off. Riding off Mark. Gansey's still keeping it going. Now Grant's going to get in there. Grant goes for it. Carol's going to get a piece of it. Carol looking for her first goal of the day. And look at this. Carol. Andre's going to get one here for World Pole League White. And it is coming together for the World Pole League White. Remember, for the bragging rights. Carol will get her first goal. And that will make it. Four to two, so a little two-goal lead here in this third chucker. Remember, four chuckers to Polo. With Grant making sure Anthony's all right. We got 241 on the clock as the clock is stopped. Make sure Anthony's comfortable there with his pony. He said, yeah, no problem. And they'll regroup here as here we go on the bowling. Now, Sterling, he's going to leave it for Bellini. Bellini spins it around. He's going to send Sterling forward. Sterling, beautiful little gray pony right there. Takes it forward. Look at this pass by Juan Bellini. That might go on its own. Juan Bellini, that was almost almost a two-pointer. Carroll puts it back on the field. Grant's going to spin around and try to keep it going. The Cobra's going to get in there, and Mark Gandy's going to put that one away. So look at this. The World Pole League White picking up three unanswered goals here. And the clock ticking down. So just under two minutes now as they come back to the center. Good passing by the World Pole League White. Everybody getting involved. Bellini starting it from the center. Carroll and uh, Mark downfield ready for the passes. And Sterling... Just finding the open gaps. Let's see if World Pole League Purple can get it going again. 
Santos had a great run. Remember, there's a nice little back shot from Sterling. Anthony trying to keep it going. Sterling goes for the hook there. Now Anthony looking for Enrique. Enrique Bueno with a nice hook there on Carroll. But turned around and controlled by Bellini. Santos. Tato now. He'll work it in here. This is what you need. Santos shot on goal. And that one's going to go in. So Santos Bellini with another very nice shot from way out in the corner. We're going to click down to one minute left here in this third chucker. One minute. And that's going to go the other side. Luis, we're going to put the purple. Yep, he got it. And it's got to be four to three. Or five to three, I'm sorry. Five to three. There you go. Yep, met the Cobra Con one. Thank you there, Kale. So five to three now. And let's see if the purple could get it and keep it going. Grant Gansey been very busy at the number four position. As I said, this white team, they have been pressing from the first chucker. The Cobra came out. Now Mark turning the corner. Grant's going to lean way in there. Leave it around for Santos. Why not? Two goals on today. Here you go. There's your 30 second warning bell. And let's see if the World Poly Purple can get one more. Juan Bellini with the back shot. Carroll, Fowler's going to get there. Nice little pickup by Carroll. Bounces off of Grant. Carroll's going to keep moving, though. Anthony overrides. And double G. He's got Bueno going forward. Enrique Bueno on the move. Enrique Bueno is keeping it out in front of Carroll. Here comes Enrique. Enrique gets a piece of it. And that'll end it right there, guys. So we'll leave the ball right there. When we return, now a bit of an advantage for the World Pro League Purple is they're going to have a bowl in on their side, down by two goals, one chucker left. You don't want to miss this fourth and final chucker. Stay with us. We'll be back from the Aspen Valley Polo Club, field number one, CTV Sports, just for the love of it. Here we go, fourth and final chucker. Just for the love of it. And at the moment, World Pole League White in control, but only by two goals, and that's not enough. And uh, Bellini, the Cobra, Carroll, and Sterling, they know it. So, bit of an advantage here for the World Pole League Purple. They're going to get a bowling from the center to the boards. And they're about 80 yards out. 
So, let's see if they can get control of this bowling. This is a big bowl, a huge bowling to try to win here. Anthony Devron's going to go to the front. They're going to put Enrique at number two. And it's going to be won again by Bellini. I mean, I think they've won about 80% of the bowlings here today, the World Pole League White. And look at this, Bellini for two points. And that ball might go on its own. Juan Bellini, it's got the legs. Nice try, Carroll, on the next shot. Carroll gets a piece of it, cleaned up nicely by Grant Gansey. Looking for Santos. Santos spins around. His dad's going to get in there. And controlled that again by Double G. Now Gandhi down the one, down the near side here, looking for Deveron. Carroll's going to get a piece of it. Carroll kind of goes forward with it, looking for the Cobra, but Deveron picks it up. Well done, Anthony. Back to the inside, clean tail shot by Mark Gandhi, but picked up by Grant Gandhi. Grant, nice little fake. He's got time. He's got the Bueno going forward. Enrique going forward, now Santos, Deveron, and the Cobra playing zone back. Loose ball play, picked up now by Juan Bellini. Bellini, he's got Sterling going forward. Sterling now. Juan, he's got the Cobra to the left, Sterling to the right. Pass to Sterling, bounce, oh, bad luck. Deveron's going to have time here, Anthony or Santos. Tato's going to get a breakaway, true breakaway coming for World Polo League Purple. Enrique said, you got time, Santos, take your time. Santos trying to stay with Juan Bellini if he can. Tato, shot or goal, and Santos Bellini will get the finish and pick up his third goal of the day, but more importantly, We'll get it within one goal here. So, huge goal there. As we click down to 315. About three minutes on the clock by the time we get our bowl in. So, a lot of time left here. One goal difference. Broken play. And World Poli picked up. Oh, look at this. Santos Bellini gets the ball out of the bowl in. Now on the breakaway. Dad coming hard. Tanto, Tanto right in front. Bails off a pony. Enrique's going to have an opportunity here. Bueno. Oh, Enrique overrides. They leave it for Deveron. Look at Bellini in there battling it out. Now Grant Gansey. Gansey's going to try to get it. Now the Cobra. And, oh, bad luck there for the World Poli Purple. As Santos was on the breakaway, Enrique took a swipe at it, but overrode. Now they come together. Good read here by number three. That's Bellini. Tato having a great game. Santos going to fire one from way out. And just wide to the right. But I like the thought process there with 2-10 on the clock. 2 minutes, 10 seconds. Looks like uh, the Cobra... And Juan Bellini, they're going to have a little chat down here, kind of figure out what they want to do up by a goal. They need to get a positive possession here. World Polo League Purple playing well here in this fourth and final chucker. There's the ball for Sterling. If he can get there, Carroll's going to wait on it. Nice near side. Anthony now goes for the offside back shot. Good angle. Picked up again by Santos. He'll take it forward one time and then back it up cleanly. Carroll's going to get there on the ride off, leave it for the Cobra. Good ride off by Farnsworth. Now here comes, oh, Cobra gets his pocket picked there by Grant Gansey. Turned around by Juan Bellini. Bellini's going to get an opportunity to fire this one down the center. It goes off the pony of Sterling. And that ball's going to go just wide. So. We'll have a knock in here with one minute, five seconds, 105 on the clock. A must needed positive possession for World Pole League Purple. Grant Gansey knows it. Nobody going to Grant yet. Now the Cobra comes over. Grant with a pretty pass right here, looking for Bueno. Enrique gets taken out by Carroll, controlled by Juan Bellini. Juan now, he'll fake the back shot. Santos going to go for the pick. Pick Now picked up here by Anthony. Oh, well done by Enrique Bueno. Enrique with the, 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 oh, look at this shot. Right in front of goal. Look for the eagle. Oh, wow. 30 seconds left here. What a steal by Santos Bellini. Now, Enrique. 
Oh, Bueno had an opportunity. Now it's going to be Juan Bellini. Santos with the back shot. Bellini in there battling it out with Enrique. And look at this, Juan Bellini with purple jerseys everywhere. Grant Gandhi tries to steal it away. You might have time here. Six seconds on the clock. They need to shoot this ball. That ball's going to go to the right. And that'll end it right there. Wow. Man, what a series of plays. And the Cobra, he brought the Bracken rights. <laughs> well done. Back and forth. The World Poly Purple, they had the opportunities there. I thought they were going to get it. But... Uh, Enrique Bueno, he was right in front. He hit a belly shot down there. Came across in front of goal for uh, Santos Blini. Santos with three goals on the day. Grant with one. That's how they get their four. And then they mix it up here with Carroll. Farnsworth with uh, one goal. Mark with three goals. The Cobra, Juan Blini with one. And Sterling doing a great job. And good teamwork there. So, winners of the 2023 Just for the Love of It tournament is going to be World Polo League White. But well done, World Polo League Purple. They gave them a run for their money at the end. But the bragging rights will go to the World Polo League White. We're going to go to a little break. We're going to line up here. We're going to have our trophy presentation. I want to thank Gaston Doniak, our mounted official. And uh, after our trophy presentation, then we're going to have the juniors. We'll have our kids polo and a game right here in front here on the number one field. And then we'll take it inside for our, uh, well, most of our younger players, some of our ladies, and some of our young gentlemen. So stay with us here on CTV Sports. We'll be back for our trophy presentation.
Okay, welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. I want to thank Katie Krigbaum. Everybody put your hands together for Katie Krigbaum here. She's going to be helping us with our awards day just for the love of it. And five to four, but I got to give the bragging rights to the World Pole League White. But let's go with the runners up. Katie, we're going to go ahead and call up Enrique Bueno. Come on, Enrique. Put your hand together. And, and no bueno today. No bueno today, they said. Well, you had some opportunities, though. You did have some opportunities there. Play number two. Well, you know this guy pretty well. Please put your hand together. Anthony Devron is Katie and Anthony, of course, our boyfriend and girlfriend. There's a great shot there. And well done again, uh, Anthony. You did what you do, man. You played offense and defense. This guy right here had three goals on the day, Santo Tato Bellini, but it wasn't enough. But good shooting today, Tato. And, of course, remember, we have the Romero Britos Awards, and these are signed. So very, very cool. Romero plays uh, down in our beach pole. The captain, put your hands together for Grant Gansy, double G. One goal, uh, Grant G, great job. I mean, it was just tough. The, the World Pole League wide, I think they earned it today, guys. And you got to put your hands together for it. Let's put your hands together for one of our ladies who played today. Please put your hands together for Carol Fonder playing the number one. Well done, Carol. They, they, you are a hustler. They, they, uh, I told them to watch out for her. Also, just flying in. It's great to see him as always, every time. Part of the family, Sterling Jones. We love you, Sterling. Beach polo, snow polo at the number one field at the Asphalt Polo Club. We love to see you. Three goals on the day. Come on, Cobra. He give him the bragging rights, Cobra. Give him the bragging rights. Mark Gandy fired up here. He earned a good shot there with Katie and Mark. Mark, well done. And, well, give the bragging rights, Juan Bellini. You earned it, too, today, Juan Bellini. One good <laughs> with Katie right there. And, of course, the Juan Britos Awards. Now, all right, with Katie, we have to pull the chair up here, Katie. And we're, we're going to go ahead and give our MVP. So, our MVP for the 2023, just for the love of it, is going today to number one, Carol Father. Come on, Carol. Well done, Carol. You did so much in between the game. So many hooks. Sit down there, Carol. And Katie, it's right there. You got to put the breathe well, bro. Breathe down. There's a nice shot. There you go. I like that one. Well done, Carol. You don't need to score goals to get the MVP, Carol. You had one goal on the day, but a fabulous job. And we want to get a good shot here. Let's get a good shot of the uh, of the winning team. Yeah, because this is, yep, let's go ahead and get it, because this is a great trophy, just for the love of it. Romero Brito, man, he is, as I said, a good friend of ours. Of course, the Gansies, he also comes and plays in our celebrity match down at the Beach Polo in Miami. So, Romero, we want to thank you, and thank you once again. Winners of the 2023, just for the love of it, World Polo League White. Well done, everybody. Great job. Sterling, Carol, Mark, and Juan, a very strong team today. All right, so I want to thank everybody for our trophy presentation. A lot of fun. And as I said, we had uh, everybody going for it today here because uh, we had the father-son going at it. But you got to give it up. World Pole League White, they, uh, they had the win. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to a little break. I got Gaston Dorniak already on the field. Thank you, Gaston. And once again, we're back at the number one field here at the Aston Valley Pole Club. And we're going to switch it up. And we're going to have some of our junior players play now. So this should be a lot of fun. If you saw it last week, we have father sons playing with each other, against each other. But this is the future of polo, these young players that you're going to see today. And so I'm going to throw it to a little break. But we're going to get going here in the next four, three to four minutes. It looks like they're all getting warmed up. And then again, remember, stay with us. Because we always have the frosting on the cake as we take it indoor to our world-class indoor arena. And we have our junior juniors, our young ladies and gentlemen, will be playing. And uh, it's always a lot of fun. And we'll bring it to you live here on CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back, everybody. We're ready to go. Yeah, whatever he keeps going, play. Go ahead, go, Breed. I'll, I'll, I'll announce them. We know these guys. And uh, we got the Polo School Purple today. We're going to play with, uh, we got Inda Pierez playing in the morning. Inda right there. <laughs> Good job, Inda. Glad to see you're okay, Inda. As he had a horse step on his hand last year. Playing number two, looks like they'll be Gondolito Pierez, his father. And playing number three will be Sugar Erskine. Right there, and then in the blue, we have our Anthra Valley Polo Club blue with Fran Spinacci. Where you at, Fran? There you go. Artemio, forget us, Artemio with Balnier, and then Pablo Spinacci. So, three on three, four chuckers of polo. And as I said, these are uh, very strong, young junior players right here. And here's one of them right here, Artemio, forget us, and now in the Pietes. Also, we're going to put a ride off on them, and a shot on goal there. It's going to go just wide to the left. But a nice opportunity there, a good run there by Artemio. Now remember, these, uh, well, three of them, Silver's not out there today, Navija Shada, but these three players, they are uh, three of the players that you've seen on the polo wheel that we've been having exhibition matches on Sunday. And uh, they are four, well, three of the top, I think with Silver, four of the top uh, polo wheel players in the world. I, I wouldn't be surprised. They are so strong on the wheel, and uh, we might have some exhibition for you. We'll see. We've been doing a little bit of that during the, our Sunday games. That's our Sunday games, but they've done a great job, and all, I guess, you know, all the young ladies also play. Here we go, though. It's going to be Gonzalito, and he tells his son Inda to go forward, and look at this pass by Gonza to Inda. Inda gets a piece of it. Turned around quickly by Spinacci. Look at the ball control right here by Fran. He has improved with a higher level this summer, along with Artemio. And I've been, uh, I went up, been up at Rose Spur all summer long, umpiring the practice games up there. And uh, those are on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and they have been fabulous. On the move, Inda Pierres. Nice pick up here, Inda. He's got about three lengths on Pablo. Shot on goal by Inda. And que golazo, Inda Pierres. He's going to get the first goal of the day and kept Pablo right in his sights right there. But a good finish by Inda Pierres. That'll be our first goal for the Polo School Purple. Well done, Inda. He runs the goal great, doesn't he? <laughs> I love seeing him when he gets out in front. And he's also improved. Remember, only nine years old in the Pierres. <laughs> and uh, just super strong little polo player. He's uh, He loves to play the game, as I said. And uh, as I said, as they get bigger and they get a little stronger, as we've watched them all grow, like Fran Spinacci and Artemio, Artemio's father, Nacho, and his brother, Alario, are playing. His sister will be playing in our final game, Alba. And, of course, his mother is here. And Delfina, the whole family, to forget his family, always here, big polo family. But it's great here at the Amplified Polo Club because that's one of the, uh, our special, uh, whoops, one of the top classes we have also to be able to work with the polo, with the young polo players, and opportunities for them not just to play uh, against junior players, but also play against some top pro players. And if you saw that uh, a couple weeks ago, we had this uh, young group of players right here. Is our Tamio taking it down. Nice play by Inda as Inda pushes them wide. Sugar will open that one up, looking for Pablo. Pablo Spinacci backed up there by Gonzalito Pierez. One minute, 40 seconds on the clock. As Pablo will turn around, Spinacci looking for a shot on goal here. There's the play over to Fran. Fran now going for the ride off, backed up cleanly by Sugar Erskine. Gondolito gets hooked by Artemio. Artemio trying to work it through the pack here. Forget it, right in front of goal, bounces off a pony. Inda is going to try to take that one out. Fran. With the ride off of Gondolito and a good pickup here by Inda, but he gets hooked by Artemio. Now forget us. From a standstill, looking for the equalizer, just off to the right side, and that'll give the Polo School Purple an opportunity for the knock in. As we click down here, under a minute left here in this first chucker of four. Outlet pass from Erskine. 
looking for Inda. Helmet, Inda Pieres on the move right here, Inda. He gets that one running full speed on the far side. Gondolito, his father, going to move it forward here. Now they come together, Inda and Artemio. Inda leans way back. Pablo is going to seal that one away, try to get it going here for the Aston Valley Polo Club Blue. Nice little play. He's got France Panacci as 15 seconds. So our warning horn. Here comes Fran. Fran, nice pickup. Spinacci, good ball control. Fran, near side, offside. And just off to the left. And that will end our first chucker play. So when we return, we will have a knock-in in favor of the Polo School Purple. Put your hands together. Asa Valley. We'll be right back for our second chucker of play. Stay with us here from the Asa Valley Polo Club field number one. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here we go. One to zero. Inda Pieres with the one goal. Nice run by Inda on the breakaway play. And uh, that'll take us to our second chucker. Remember, join us tomorrow. We'll start at 11 a.m. Mount Standard Time. Silver Queen uh, Invitational Final. And then we're going to go into the Carbondale Classic. The uh, Silver Queen Invitational, Santarita, Melissa Gandhi, Nick Rodan, Alejandro Navis Estrada, and Stuart Armstrong. They won their uh, round robin on Friday. Congratulations to them. Polo for Christ coming in with Steve Cox. And uh, welcome back, Steve, one of our uh, well, re regular players. He plays down at the Grand Champions Polo Club to our, our sister club. And playing with Grant Gansey, Paulito Pierez, and Tatu Gomez Romero. And so that should be a fun final, 17 goals against 17. Carbondale Classic will be played after that, and then we'll have the Just for the Thrill of It. So three finals for you. And remember, everything benefiting our Summer Polo Charity Classic and the Aspen Valley Hospital Foundation. So you can always check that out, aspenvalleyhospitalfoundation.org. But here we go. Second chucker play, and we have three on three here in our junior kids' Polo playing with the pro players today, 
And it's just been back and forth. Good open polo. Like I said, only one goal by Inda Pierres. We did join us in the purple. Inda Pierres, Don Lito Pierres, his father, and Sugar Erskine. And they're going up against the Aspen Valley Polo Club Blue. And that's with Fran Spinacci, Artemio Figueres in the gray helmet. Fran in the white helmet. And his dad, Pablo, playing number three in the white helmet. And uh, look very similar besides uh, just a little difference in size. But otherwise, they dress the same exactly. Father, son. On the move right here in the, and Artemio. And uh, if you watched uh, a couple weeks ago, one thing you did see was how well these young pro players, junior pro players, play defense. <laughs> they are very strong when it comes to the defensive side of the stick. It's not about the ball all the time, and they know it. Sugar. Erskine, I'll let pass for Gonzalito, Pieres, who will be playing tomorrow in the Carbondale Classic, his uh, team, Team Tonkwa. And uh, so that should be a, uh, a good final as they're playing with the Cobra. And Tomato Pieres with Jeff Hildebrand. So they'll be playing, and they're, uh, they'll battle it out against the Mountain Chevrolet with Michael Payne, Santos Bellini, Nacho Nubiz Estrada. And Martin Hauregi on the move in the piano looking for goal number two. Keeping it out in front of Pablo in the, in the, in the, oh, bounced off a pony, turned around. Here comes Fran. Fran's going to leave it for his dad. His dad puts it out in front. Here comes Fran Spinacci. Fran now. Good ball control on the great pony. He's got Artemio downfield. Artemio gets a piece of that one. Artemio trying to get by Sugar. Sugar with a nice little back shot as we click down to 2.30 on the clock. That one will bounce off of Pablo, Pablo Spinacci, one of our top pilots here for the Santa Rita breeding operation down in southern Florida at the Santa Rita Polo Farm and, of course, in Ocala. And uh, does an amazing job with all of the different four-legged athletes that come out of the Halo Polo Ponies and the Santa Rita breeding operation. One-on-one -on -one here, Sugar and Pablo. Pablo will turn it up. Little pump fake. Now Spinacci. Looking for his son. He's going to get him here. It's going to be Fran. Puts Gonzalito on his hip. Now Fran. Spinacci looking for the equalizer. Fran. That ball's going to go on its own. Ooh. Right in front. And just wide to the right. So nice attempt here by Fran Spinacci. His sugar will bring it in with the one-timer. And he's going to find Inda. Inda gets a piece of that one. He'll override. Now it's backed up cleanly by Fran, but nobody home. And turned around now by Gonzalito. Gonzalito, nine goals now. Former 10-goal player. One fifteen on the clock. A minute 15 here in our second chucker play. Fran Spinacci, he's got time here. He's got his dad going forward. And he's got Artemio. Our friend, who is it? Oh, he's going to find Artemio. Nice pass, Fran. Artemio, that ball's got eyes. If Pablo can get there... And just bad luck here as the Aspen Valley Polo Club, Blue, shooting at goal. Get ready. Here comes your 30-second warning bell. Looks like they'll get the knock-in going here. So they'll play out this final 30. And Gonzalito. Fran leaning way out. Well done, Fran Spinacci. That's not an easy play. Inda on the near side. Now on the off side. Going to keep it moving here. Fran's going to get there before. Oh, good play, Fran. Didn't want to foul. 30 seconds left here in the Fran. They'll leave it behind. Opened up cleanly by Pablo. And Artemio's going to have time here. Artemio going to drop the head here on his dark bay pony. Now he leaves it for Fran. Fran gets a piece of it. He'll override. Sugar with the back shot. That ball's going to come off the boards. Loose ball play for Inda. Ducking and diving. Here comes Inda. And just a little bad luck there, Inda. But he's going to gather 20 more yards for the Polo School Purple. So when we return, we will have a bowl in from the center to the boards. And that will be right about the 100-yard line. So a little bit of an advantage for the Polo School Purple. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All right, everybody, uh, CTV Sports, Chucker number three. And, well, Inda Piana is with the only goal today. And uh, some good shooting by uh, all the different teams. The Aspen Valley Pole Club in the blue having some opportunities there. Artemio taking a few shots. Fran taking a few shots. Pablo taking a few shots. They actually have, I think, have more shots on goal probably in the first half. Then the uh, pole school purple, but that doesn't count. You got to make those, got to put them between that uh, 24 feet, eight yards. And right now, Inda Pierre is with the only goal. Inda back on that little pony, so watch out. He gets a lot done on this little bay pony. And here we go. Pablo looking for Artemio. Nice little play here by Artemio as he gets a little rubbed by Sugar. Now stolen away there by Gondolito. And everybody was converging on Artemio there. He had to deal with three purple jerseys. Good ride off here by Inda leaning in there. But Artemio wins the ride off, wins the ride off, and then comes back here and leaves it for Pablo. Everybody going forward. Spinacci now with the lob wedge looking for Artemio. He's got him. Figueres walking the dog. Good ride off here by Inda. Shot on goal. And will that one make it in there? Yeah, and Artemio. We'll get one, and that'll get the equalizer, making it one to one. And Artemio will get his first goal of the day. And back to the center, we will go three on three here in our second match of the day. Once again, congratulations! As we had our uh, just for the love of it, and the Romero Brito. Awards, man. Beautiful. Signed, sealed, and delivered by Romero. And I said he actually good friend of the Gansies and our polo as he does come down to the beach polo. He lives in Miami. Brazilian artist and uh, spends time down there at least. And uh, so he comes over and, and uh, you can, uh, you'll can you see them at the, the uh, beach polo World Cup in Miami in April. All right. France Spinacci is going to get one here. And look at this. As it looks like the Polo, uh, uh, Aspen Valley Polo Club Blue is now getting fired up as Artemio finds one down at the Aspen goal. And now Fran Spinacci's going to pick one up going towards the Glenwood goal. Back to the center they go. In the cup flying in there. He says, I'm going to scoop my pony up. He's going to get it all schooled up. And back to the center here now. Everybody fighting for possession here. That's the Valley Polo Club with their first lead of the day. Let's see if Polo School Purple can get the equalizer. Artemio, outlet pass for Fran. Fran will get a piece of it. Slows it down here. Look at this play. He's going to find his dad, Pablo. Now Pablo with a shot on goal. And everybody on the blue jerseys with blue jerseys on scoring goals here in the third chucker. So, Fran, Artemio, and Pablo making it 3-1. to one. Very strong chucker for the Aspen Valley Polo Club. Back to the center. <laughs> His Indica flying in there. He says, wait up, guys. Now, I get a piece of an Inda. Get out of the breakaway here, maybe Inda. Piano's on the move now. He's got a little bit of a run here, Artemio. Now, Inda. Wait, goes for the drag. Oh, Artemio going to the speed stick there. Makes the hook on Inda. Loose ball play. Stolen away. Taken forward here by Gondolito. Near side neck shot to the goal. And that might go on its own. And that's a pretty shot by Gondolito Pieres. And that's going to get it within one goal. So, Gondolito will get his first goal of the day. And back to the center we will go. Remember, we have our three tournaments tomorrow. We talked about the uh, Silver Queen uh, Invitational and the uh, Carbondale Classic. But we have the Just for the Thrill of It, too, with Net Jets, where Fran and Artemio are actually going to play in it. They're going to split chuckers. Pablo Spinacci, not to forget, and Juan Bellini. And they're going to play against STA Polo with Dominic State, Jason Crowder, Sugar Erskine, and Lario Figueres. You can catch all that tomorrow, Mountain Standard Time, starting at 11 a.m. Turned around here quickly, and it's the Spinacci program. Ooh, Fran leaves it now for Artemio. Artemio, a little bit too far there. Gondolito will pick it up, steal it. We got under 40 seconds till our warning bell. So 
a very strong chucker for the Asper Valley Polo Club. Here comes your warning bell. 30 seconds left. Gonzalito looking for the equalizer here. Gonza's got into going forward. Fran now playing zone back. Goes for the back shot. Inda picks up the loose ball play. Next shot coming. Inda right in front. Well done, Fran Spinacci. Cleans it up nicely on the doorstep. Artemio's going to gather a few more yards. Sugar gets back. Sugar with a great back shot. Fran, oh, overrides, give and go from Gonzalito to Inda. Inda might have time. Is that thrown? Oh, bad luck is that ball. We'll see if it was off the field or still on the field. But three to two as we go into our fourth and final chucker. And a nice attempt there by the Polo School Purple to get the equalizer. But only one goal difference. Stay with us. We'll be back for our fourth and final chucker. Remember, after that, we're going to go to a little break. We're going to go inside as we set everything up for our final game of the day. We'll have our junior young ladies and gentlemen playing in our world-class arena. Stay with us here on CTV Sports. All right, here we go, fourth and final chucker. And it looks like uh, you know, the rest of our junior players are preparing for their indoor arena polo. We have a couple chuckers in there. And here we go, though, three to two. Aspen Valley Polo Club in the blue. Fran, Artemio, and Pablo going up against Polo School Purple. And bad luck is that one's going to go just out of bounds. And we'll have a change of possession. So a cop on the pitch. And that'll go in favor of the Pole School Purple with Inda Gonzalito. And 
Three to two. Purple looking for the equalizer. Uh-oh, bad luck there. The bounce is off of Gondolito's pony. And straight back. Now Fran around Gondolito. Gondo put him on his hip. Take him back. And there's the back shot from Pierres to Pierres. And a good pick up here now by Inda. Inda taking his time, slowing it around the corner, trying to get around Artemio. Well done, Artemio. Picks him up cleanly and the back shot. Sugar gets it going forward on the near side, but oh, nice play there by Sugar on the hook. He hooked the back shot, and I guess they didn't like it. They might have been across the back there. We'll see. So, spot hit. Maybe his horse's tail was a little bit on the side there. Remember, you got to be 100% on the same side. You are allowed to hook the back shot. As long as the mount is below the shoulder of the player making the swing, you cannot hook him above the shoulder. In the arena, it is below the horse's rear end. you got to go below. You must hook below, and it makes sense because it's a very tight area in the arena. Here we go. Inda Pieres looking for goal number two. Inda. Oh, that looks like a clean shot here by Inda Pieres. Yeah, and Inda will get goal number two, and look at this. The equalizer. From Pieres and Inda shooting that ball from just outside. So a good 50-yard uh, shot there. He was almost over by the boards. And we got a set. We got two threes up there in our four chuckers. So as they come back to the center, who will take the lead here? Can the purple keep it going as... They had, uh, they had some goals. They had one goal in the third, but the third chucker was owned by the Aspen Valley Polo Club as uh, everybody's scoring goals, Fran, Artemio, and Pablo. 3-3 three to three as they go down the far side. Picked up here now. Inda trying to get by Artemio. Artemio with the back shot. Taken out of the air by Sugar. 2.35 on the clock. Yes, it's going to be Fran. Panacci with the breakaway, and he's by himself with room to work. Franz Panacci back to the center. Sugar coming in hot. Fran now slamming on the brakes. Well done, Fran. Waiting for somebody to run by. Looks like Pablo. There goes Artemio. Now Fran with the outlet pass. Going to find Pablo. Pablo, though, picked up by Gonzalito. And, uh oh Sugar. Fran's got to go to the speed stick. And Sugar on a flyer. Here comes Erskine on the Bay Pony. Sugar gets a piece of it. Will it stay on the field? Just wide to the left. So, Fran applying the pressure. They'll line it up for a knock-in. Waiting for Artemio to come back. Going to have a little polo huddle. Pablo meeting with the two young pros. Going to get him back in line here. Artemio, he'll take his time, take the ball off to the far right side. He's going to be uh, guarded by Inda. Picked up here now and take it forward as Pablo gets a piece of it. Spinacci down the center. Loose ball play. Gondolito near side. Gondolito near side. Butter. Keeping it moving. He's got Artemio going. He got Inda going forward here. Artemio, though, puts the ride off on Inda. They'll leave it for Fran, and Fran's got room to work. Spinacci. Fran Spinacci now on the big chestnut. Oh, he'll override. Pablo, though, he'll come in on the steel gray. Pablo, back to the center. Look for the outlet pass. There it is by Pablo. That ball going down inside the 60. Fran's going to have to get around Sugar. Not an easy job. Backed up across the goal mouth. A dangerous play, but well read here by the Pierres is. And Inda's going forward. Here comes Gondolito. Gondolito looking for Inda. Inda on the near side. Well done. Pierres now. 30 seconds left. Oh, Inda Pierres, but he's got to get around Artemio. Artemio checks his shoulder. Now the near side back shot. Oh, he overrides, but he takes Inda out. Backed up cleanly by Pablo. Fran might get one more run here. Fran Spinacci, if he can get by Sugar, Sugar snaps it back. Men there by Pablo. Well done, Spinacci. Trying to keep it going here. The clock goes tick, tick, tick. There's the big bomb. 
Here comes your bell, and that'll end it right there. So put your hands together, everybody, as we'll end in a tie. I want to thank our Mount official Gaston Dornier, Gaston. Thank you, my man, as always. And we're going to go ahead and go to a little break here. And uh, when we return, we'll return with the frosting on the cake. And we have all of our junior players playing in our beautiful world-class indoor arena. Once again, I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports. So I say thank you for making us the leaders of polo broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.
three. One, two, one, two, one, two. ABC, one, two, three. One, two, three. ABC, one, two, three. December as they prepare the players Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we've gone from the number one field at the Aston Valley Polo Club into our world-class arena. And Gaston, wait a minute. Let me go through the players here. When you hear your name, everybody, put your mouth in the air. And playing for the Polo School Pink is going to be Alba. Forget us, Alba. Where you at, Alba? Alba, put your mouth up. Alba, put your mouth in the air. There she is right there. And then we have Lolo. Where's Lolo at, Alejandro? There's Lolo right there. And then we have, it looks like uh, Lupe. Where's Lupe? Oh, Mia. I'm sorry, Mia Pianez. There's Mia right there. Now we go to the black team. And we have Lupe Pianez. Where's Lupe right there? Violeta Pianez right there. And, of course, Azu right there. And then where's Facundo? Facu. Facu. Taco Riva. There he is right there. 
<laughs> I'm surprised he didn't pick the Maryland up. He is the, the, uh, the youngest player that we have playing today. Guess old Dorniak always in the saddle. We want to thank you. We want to thank all the moms, of course. As, uh, of course, Clary Spinacci, her son played earlier. Maria Piaz, she's the mom of, of course, Violetta and Azu out there. And then we have Carol Piaz, she's the uh, mom of Mia and Lupe Piaz. They're playing on different teams. Delfina, mom of, of course, Alba Figueres out there. And then we have Sophie, who, uh, and Rosie, Rosie is the mom of Lolo and Facundo, and of course Alejandro, the papa. And uh, then uh, Sophie's actually Sophie doesn't have any of her kids out of today. She uh, she had Silver played all season long, and uh, Izzy was playing, and uh, they are they had to head up back to Argentina. So here we go on the move right now. We're going to play one chucker, and it's going to be a ten minute chucker. So away we go with the Polo School Black and the Polo School Pink. On the move right here is going to be the Polo School Black and Violetta Pieres. Violetta, nice pick up there is Mia. Comes around the corner. Good riding here by Mia. Mia Pieres now. Taking it down the line, Mia. Actually, Mia and her sister, Lupe, were two of the high scores last week. They come together right there with Azu Pieres. Who's actually Violetta and Azu are the both of the sisters of Inda Pieres, who you saw play on our field earlier, and the father Gonzalito. All right, loose ball play here. It's going to be Lolo, Lolo Estrada with Alejandro on the little paint pony. Nice try there with Azu trying to get it going. Alba, well done, Alba on the near side. Well done, Mia. Now here comes the pink Polo School pink with Mia and Alba. Nice play by Mia into the corner. Alba's taking out the man. <laughs> well done, Alba. Taking out two players right there. Good ride, Alba. And now it gets turned around the other way, and here comes Azu. Well done, Azu, on the move. Well done. Is she picking it up? Now I leave it for Lupe. Pierre and Lupe. Three goals last game for Lupe Pierre. She was on fire. Loose ball play. Picked up by her sister, Mia. Now they come together. Mia will leave it for Alba. Alba trying to get it going there. Nice hook by Azu. And she has got the hook down. I was talking to her dad, Gonzalito. And she's one of the younger players, too. So those ballots get a little heavy. Well done, now. Azu hitting the ball. <laughs> well, today, keeping it moving, she'll give it to her sister, Violetta. Now Azu hitting the ball all day. Look at her getting it going down the line. Wow, well done. As I said, these, all these players, they get better and better every chuck or every minute. And uh, we've had the opportunity to watch these young ladies and gentlemen grow here at the Asset Valley Polo Club. A lot of these players, uh, they, they did never really played. They played here as they don't, do not play a lot of arena polo in Argentina. So it gives them an opportunity to play here. Alba, forget us on the move. Alba, nice try, Alba. Now Violetta, oh, well done, Violetta, with the nice back shot. They love that reverse neck shot. Now, well done, Azu, hitting the ball well today. Down it goes, Mia gets a piece of it. Lupe, though, Lupe Pieres right in front of goal. Well done, Alba, with a great save. Alba Figueres taking it off the doorstep and taking it around. Now they come together, Azu trying to make a play. Still going with Mia. Mia on the breakaway. Oh, Mia. She was off to the races. Now it's going to be Lolo. Lolo. Estrada. Big ball right there. Mia now. And Alba on the breakaway. Look at Alba. Looking for the man. Well done, Alba. Trying to take the man out. Well done, Azu. Gets a piece of it. She'll leave it for her sister, Violetta. Violetta's got that neck shot down. Puts it down into the corner. Now a little bit of a face off here. Alba and Azu. Alba, Azu's going to get it. Keep it moving. Get that mallet going now, Azu. Well done. Now Violetta, right in between. Now on the breakaway one more time. Here comes Violetta Pieres on the move. Mia, Alba leads way out underneath the pony there. Nice shot. Now Azu <laughs> bounces off the pony. Lupe Pieres with the tail shot. Lupe, Alba, Azu, keep it moving, everybody. Now it's going to be Alba. 
Picked up quickly by Lupe, though. Lupe, Pierres, on the move. Nice hook. Well done. Azu's getting the ball well today. Number three in the black. Well done, Violetta. Her older sister, Alba with the back shot. Right in front of goal now, Violetta. Working it down. Pierres leaves it in there for Lupe. Lupe met in there by her sister, Mia. Now Mia. Mia on the breakaway. Facundo's going to get in there. Come on, Facu. Kaku on the, on the gray pony. Right there with Dorniak. Loose ball play. Azu on the breakaway. Pierre's lead a shot by Azu. Pierre's on the move. Number three. Shallow goal by Pierre's looking for the first goal today. Right in front of goal. Met in there by Mia Pierre's, and Mia will take it out. Mia. Good ball control. Round the corner they go. Lupe is going to get in the mix. Lupe now. Lupe under the neck. Mia. Mia now on the breakaway. Mia Pierres. Oh, overrides. Alba, though, in the rumble seat. Keep it going. Here comes Alejandro. Azu leads way out. Well done, Azu. Man, she is such a great little rider. She really leads way out. No, but oh, Alba, forget it. It's on the move. Alba. There's a shot. Alba keeping it going. Alba still has control. Alba right in front. Azu looks for the seal. Mia overrides. Picked up here by Azu. Well done. Pierres. They come together. Now they come together one more time. Mia. And it's going to be Alba, though. Alba and Mia for the Polo School Pink. Now Lupe. Lupe Pierres for the Polo School Black. They come together. Azu is going to come under the neck with it. Nicely hit. Alba jumps right on that one, though. Now Violetta, sugar and moving. Mia Pierres trying to go under the neck with that one. Bounces off a pony. Now picked up here by Violetta. Oh, what a save by Alba. And then Mia comes in there. Good teamwork. And on the move, Mia. Mia Pierres on the breakaway looking for a coast to coast run. Mia still going with it. Violetto will come in there, turn it back around, and Alba got to go for the hook. Good hook in there by Alba Figueres. Left in there. Azu. Taking her time today. Good try. <laughs> that mouth spun around in her hand. She's okay, though. I think she's got it. Yep. Picked up here now again by Mia. Stolen away by Lupe. And they come together once again. Now Mia, Azu, Violetta, Alba, who's going to come out with it? And they all got the hook down. All the young ladies pick it up, pick it up, and make it clean hooks on. But it's all it is, Mia. And they got, oh, there's a breakaway play. Mia Pierre's on the move. Mia, good pick up here. Now Mia. She's got Alba in the rumble seat. Well done, Mia. Keep it going. Alba. In there, taking a man. Now Mia walking it down, walking it down. Azu, look for the save. Oh, well done, Azu. Well done, takes it out. Now Mia with the back shot. Nice hook in there by Violetta. <laughs> well, that works. Now Alba. Azu. Well done, Azu. She's in his oh so well today, man. She's got stronger as the summer goes on. Now they come together. On the ball, no goal scored yet. Bit of a defensive battle. Alba on the roll. Alba Figueres going into a lope. Alba, well done. Keep it moving, Alba. Azu under the net. Azu under the neck. Mia. Pierres. Mia. Again. Back shot coming. Well done, Azu. Now she leaves the first sister, Violetta. Violetta's going to take it out. You got it going. Keep it going. Azu gets it back. Well done, Lupe. One minute left. One minute left in this chucker, everybody. One minute. Here comes the Polo School Black. Off the ball, off the mount of Azu Pierres. Oh, well done, Azu. But look at the defense again by Mia and Alba. They turn it around. Lolo's going to get in there. Now Lupe under the neck with it. Loose ball plays. They all come together. Violetta gets a piece of it. The Pierre sister, Azu and, and Violetta, stuck right there in between everybody, trying to keep it moving. 30 seconds left in this chucker. 30 seconds. Alba might get a breakaway. Alba 
Figueres, now Mia. Nice hook by Lupe. Lupe, she's going to get a chance. Mia comes together. Now Violetta on the breakaway. It bounces off the pony. Azu gets a piece of it. They all come together. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and there you go. That'll end it right there. So well done to all of our participants today. That'll end it, guys, girls. Sorry. You can only do one chunk a day. I'm sorry, Alba. That's what they got going on just for the horses today. But well done, everybody. Once again, Alba Figueres, Mia, great job with, of course, Lolo. Great job, Lolo. <laughs> He's doing a handshake shake right there. And, of course, on our black team, we got Facundo, Mabija Shara, Lupe Pierres, Azu Pierres, and Violeta Pierres right there. So, better let them ride and sink a ball a little bit, but that'll go ahead and take them out. So, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to CTV Sports today. What a day we had here at the Anson Valley Polo Club. It's our final Saturday. So, I, mean, I hope you enjoyed every all the games we had all season long here. It's a lot of fun. As you know, we have a lot of polo for the juniors. That's a big part of what we do at the Asset Valley Polo Club. I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports, so I say thank you for making us the leaders of polo broadcasting. And when you see all these young players playing like this, you understand why at CTV Sports we always say we love the polo. Good morning. Welcome to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we're live from the CTV studios here in Wellington, Florida. And we are going out to the Grand Champions Polo Club field number three today for the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. And I'd like to welcome everybody to CTV Sports. We have a double header for you today. This morning, we are going to have a round robin set up for you. So we have three teams coming in, Newport, Casablanca, and Santa Rita. We'll start out with uh, Newport and Casablanca. It looks like uh, Newport's going to be in their white jerseys today. Casablanca and Santa Rita. We'll have our doubleheaders, I said, so uh, join us this afternoon. And we'll have Sebucon going up against Travieso. And then we'll have continuing action on Sunday. We'll have a uh, we'll have our final, and we'll also have the finals for the Centrita Abierto. And we'll have our round robin for all our runners up. It should be another great final. This is our spring polo, and uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to spring polo. If you're a 
looking to play some fun, open style polo. Great for young players to uh, develop their skills and also great for those young four-legged athletes to develop their skills. Fields are amazing. The energy is always great after an amazing winter season we had here at the Grand Champions Polo Club. And it's just a fun time to play polo. And uh, Gaston Dornak, my man right there in the yellow, green, yellow, white. What's up, Gaston? Good to see you, my man. He'll be handling all the umpiring today. One of our top umpires from the World Polo League. And uh, Gaston had an amazing season this year with the uh, fifth season of the World Polo League. You can always go back to any of our platforms and uh, review any of the games. Right there, Pablo Spinacci wearing the number three for the Newport team. That'll put Fred Mannix at the number four. So the, as they all get ready to come out, it looks like we're going to have Larry Austin playing the number one. Gene Goldstein playing the number two. Pablo Spinacci wearing the number three. And Fred Mannix wearing the four. They'll be in the white jerseys today. Casablanca. And uh, we'll see how they're going to line up. You never know as they do switch it up at times. But they uh, are playing with Ray Rafu. And Grant Gansey, Nick Rodan, and Juan Bellini. We have a 13-goal team against a 14-goal team today. They will play on the flat, though. It is open style here in our during our spring season. There's a good shot of Juan Bellini there in his pink helmet. Director of Operations for the Polo School. Pablo Spinacci in the white helmet. Two very good friends. They'll be going, ah, there's Nick Carew. What up, Nicky? Good to see you, buddy. Looking good, as always, my brother. And uh, Nicky, what a season he had with the World Polo League. Beautiful gray ponies on there. Oh, there's our uh, general manager, Kale Newman. Checking everybody out, making sure all the field conditions are perfect and all the players are ready to go. They said if you're interested in playing uh, in the spring season, which uh, our fall and spring are just a, just perfect times are just really kind of enjoy your, they, they split the teams up so you play with different players all through the month. And it's a great time, as I said, to have some fun, play some wide open run in polo. We use one umpire for the spring season. That's Gaston. He'll take care of all the umpire jobs and procedures as we need. Right there is our final player, Fred Mannix. Good to see Freddie here for the spring season. Hey, Freddie, welcome. And, of course, Larry Robinson. Larry, good to see you, Larry. Larry playing in the World Polo League this year. Larry, a lot of fun playing in. He's played in everything. Low, medium, and high goal. There's a great shot of field three where we're playing today. Fields are amazing. That's the one thing about the spring season people just don't realize is right after the winter season and that ch weather changes and the fields, of course, have a lot of polo played on them. And uh, so, oh, so he's Larry Austin. Yeah, I'm saying thank you, Steve. We got to have, of course, we have our uh, second man in the stands, Steve Lane. He'll be out there on the iPad. If uh, Gaston Doniak does need some help or need time to review a play, he can uh, check with Steve. Also, for all the triggers are in place. What's up, Freddie? Is he Freddie playing the spring season? He had an amazing uh, World Polo League season also this year, playing for Team Audi. And uh, so here we go. Ray, there's Ray also. Ray Rafu playing the number one. Ray, good to see you, buddy, for the Casablanca. He's got the Casablanca colors on. That's cool. And, of course, the ambassador, Double G, Grant Gansey, wearing the two in the pink helmet right there. His new style, new helmet this year. And away we go. Remember the round robin setup is they'll play uh, each team will play three chuckers against each other. And then they'll go ahead and the winner will sit and the runner up will continue against Team Santarita. And uh, Team Santarita today 
for our 2023 Santerita Abierto. We'll be Melissa Ganzi, Riley Ganzi, the two ladies teaming up with uh, Mariana Garanga, Nito, and Alejandro Novija Estrada. And they actually played together last week, played very well. So uh, keep an eye on the the uh, Ganzi girls. They, uh, they play very well with Mariano and Alejandro. Here we go, field three. Back and forth in this field, I'm telling you, it looked like a pool table early today. Is going to be picked up here, taken forward by Bellini, backed up by Spinacci, bounced off a of pony, and it'll be Nick. Bellini's going to slow it down and roll dances. All right, now I'm going forward. Here we go. There's the outlet pass, number four to number three. Nice pickup, and look at this. Nick's going to laser beam one, and he's looking for Grant Gansey. Grant by himself on the move. Nice play here by Freddie. Freddie loves to play the open style, and this is a perfect example. Oh, well done, Grant. He gets just a piece of Freddie's mallet, but the give and go back to Freddie, and Freddie's going to keep it moving here for Newport. Down in the corner, it'd be Larry Austin. Larry, L.A., leaves it for Gene Goldstein. Goldstein puts it across the center for Larry now. Larry with the open shot, bounces off a pony, loose ball play, cleaned up nicely by Grant Gansey. Grant, going to carry this one down on the far right side. Larry's got time. Good angle, nice pass, good communication here. Pinpoint pass, finding Mannix. Freddie now trying to go down the center with it, taken out quickly by Roldan, and now Nick will run the far right side. Roldan, there goes Grant. Looking for the outlet pass. Nick with room to work, going to play it in between everybody. Now the give and go, looking for double G. And that ball will go just wide as that ball will roll over the far sideline. And, of course, if you're new to the game of polo, when the ball goes out of bounds, we do call that a knock-in. And remember, as they get to the center after goal score, we'll switch directions. Field 300 by 160. That's yards, and that's nine football fields. And you can put them, they put it in the area of a pole field, but these four-legged athletes like this one here, the goal scenes on, can cover the, this amount of area in less than 10 seconds. Gino, and a nice run there. It's just going to go off his cane right at the end. And he'll get the low flag. I want to say low flag or high flag. Keep an eye on the goal judges. They'll let you know whether the ball is in or out. Ball's in. They'll wave the flag high in the air. Ball's out. They will wave it down low, and they'll place that ball wherever the ball rolls out for that knocking we were talking about. If you have any uh, questions or want to learn how to play the game of polo, you can go to gcpolo.com, and uh, you can get all the information there. Our general manager, Kale Newman, his number's on there. Director of Operations, Juan Bellini, his number is at the end of the website. Is Ray. Nice approach shot. Ray, that might go on. It's on. Ray Rafu off the post. And, yeah, Ray, first touch of the game. And what a touch it was is he gets his first goal of the day. And Ray Rafu carrying the not used to seeing him in the Casablanca jersey, but he is carrying the colors perfect, representing Casablanca at the high level. Perfect move. Comes from the left to the right on our screen, right to left on the field, and that is a great finish by the number one. That'll be our first goal today. We might see a courtesy change here. So it looks like there's going to be three minutes on the clock. And I'll go for a cursey change here. And remember the uh, Santa Rita Abierto, the second of six spring tournaments. So we had the Sun Cup and um, here at the Grand Champion Polo Club. We're going to have five teams compete in a two-day tournament. It starts today on Friday. We have Casablanca and have Newport, Casablanca, Santa Rita. Here's your round robin setup. And uh, they'll play in this round robin, and we'll determine a winner. And then we'll have uh, Sebi Khan play against Trevieso. That should be a fun uh, Sebi Khan. Uh, 
going up against the uh, Travieso Calle boys, Teo and Tony. And I know Carolyn uh, will be watching, so they'll have uh, they'll have all the energy on the internet. Tomacho Pieta's and Jason Crowder on that team to, with Travieso, but a very strong Sebicon team with Mark Gandhi, the Cobra, Pablo Polito coming up from Miami. Pablo um, loves the game of polo, always plays in our spring and winter, our spring and fall seasons, and in Sugar Earth's getting Luis Escobar. So it's fun having Louis back, Escobar. His, uh, all his sons playing very well. And, of course, the uh, big polo family, the Escobar family. Very fun has seen Luis play. And uh, the winner of that will go on and go into Sunday where we'll have, we'll have just for the final, the just for the fun of it, final, our subsidiary final, and then we'll have our Centerita Abierto final. Here we go. One to zero after our first courtesy change. Remember, the courtesy change happens once per chucker. If you're new to it, for safety of the four-legged athlete, try to keep it between 45 seconds and a minute. And uh, the spring season, we loosen up on it a little bit because this is a, a fun time. Look at this. Ray, Ralph Fu going for goal number two. Ray once, twice. Oh, yeah. Ray came to play today as he'll pick up his second goal of the day. And good space. Seen here, Ray. He's in a great spot. That's a perfectly hit ball by Ganzi. Ray with the approach, always back to the, always back to that far post. Always makes it easier. You see how he makes his horse go from left to right. Pretty much the same similar approach as he had on his first run today, and a nice finish. Well done, Ray. Goal number two for Ray Rafu. On the pickup here, comes out of the back of the bowl in here. Spinacci will get a piece of it. Gino tries to drag it forward. Or actually, Mannix, I'm sorry, Fred tries to drag it forward. And then he gets taken out by Nick. And we're going to click down here to about a minute 30 left in our first chucker of play. Around the corner they go, Goldstein. He's backed up by Spinacci. Gandhi's going to give him one play there. Well done by Nick. And watch everybody go forward now. Rule Dan. There's the outlet pass. Hit perfectly to double G. Grant Gansey. Oh, the move will open up the little bay pony here. No, a little chestnut. Actually, he's going to take it back to the center now. Off to the left side. Looked like he was looking center there, but it's okay. Picked up cleanly by Spinacci. And move forward nicely by Mannix. Now, Larry on a breakaway. He'll get his first touch of the day. Larry, two in a row. That's a nice approach. Now, look at Ray coming in hot. Ray with the ride off, but Larry still got it going. Look for the deep neck shot. Larry Austin. And that ball will stay on the field as the clock goes tick, tick, tick. That'll get us down to about 35 seconds. Get ready for your warning horn. And Casablanca will get one final run here in the first chucker. Down the center they go. Good read by Mannix. Nice tail shot here. Looking for Spinacci. He's got him. Oh, back to the center. Maybe a little bit too far to the center. And Gino will come over. Nice hook by Gene Goldstein. Nobody home. Cleaned up by Bellini. As Juan will push it back out to Nick. And Nick's going to gather a few more yards for Casablanca. And he'll get it. As he gets it over center, and that will be it. No, right about his center. So when we start our second chucker play, we'll start with the bowl in right there around center field. Two to zero here after our first chucker. Thanks for joining us here on CTV Sports and the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. This is a championship meet. Yeah. All the best jockeys in the world are here, and I'm excited to ride against them. We back. You get to watch some really incredible, talented athletes out there. Yeah. To us, it's a place to be in the winter. I love Gulfstream Park because of the racing. The palm trees, the beach is right here. The horse racing is some of the best in the country. A lot of good horses come out of here. And if you want to go to the next level, Gulfstream Park was the place to come. I remember the first time I came to Gulfstream. It was like this big fairy tale place. All the history. Still. He the and all these great horses, trainers, jockeys. 
it was everything that I ever dreamed of. We were exciting to start. The field was amazing. Uh, we knew that it was a really tough team that we had against. Mark always has puts a really strong team in the field. And it was uh, Gilberto's first game, tournament and everything, so happy, happy that he did good. I used to play a lot with Pablo when I was younger. Uh, we were cousins and we played a lot of kids tournament together until we played the Open together. Then a few years we played against each other. Uh, and now bueno, we had the opportunity to play back again and it feels really good. Uh, I have a lot of connection and with uh, Alejandro I played last year here with Melissa. He's a great defender, a great back, he plays really simple, he understands the game really good so he makes things simple. And Gilberto I think he had a really good game. Yeah, I think yes, well, this is a single elimination tournament so winning today was keeping one foot in the tournament so it was really nice now that we have another game in the weekend to keep playing and yes, a lot of fun. Oh, welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we are live from the Grand Champion Polo Club, field number three for the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. And I heard that Troy, one of our fans out there in Ingrid, they were taking everybody to Buffalo Wild Wings today for lunch because you can watch all of CTV Sports Polo at Buffalo Wild Wings. So thank you, Troy. I want to thank you. I saw him walking around out there. And uh, so he join us. I guess Troy says everybody can come, and he's going to take care of the bill. So, And I uh, want to thank Buffalo Wild Wings as uh, you supporting CTV Sports and, of course, all the poll that goes on. So uh, check it out if you're in the area. You can maybe come over, and um, maybe you'll be able to get with uh, Troy and Ingrid. They're, they're going to uh, take care of us today. So that should be cool. Thank you, guys. And remember the CTV Sports app. Get the CTV Sports, a new app. Wow, here we go. Start off the second chucker. Larry L.A. in the house. Now, he had a couple good runs in the first chucker, so he seemed like he was, he was warmed up. But this is just a nice pass from uh, Spinacci. And then Larry, he taps it forward right here. He's got room to shoot. I think it looks like a clean shot. Ray, yeah, well done, Larry. That's a perfectly pr placed neck shot. As Ray Rafu was in the vicinity for the hook, Ray went for it, but Larry gets his first of the day. And Larry, man, I'll tell you what, this polo has just done so well after you played that World Polo League this season. And after you play in that 26 goal, you'd be surprised when you start stepping down to, as you said, where this is 14 to 16 goal level here in the spring. You know, after playing that faster polo, everything just seems so much slower and it just gets you so well balanced. It's it's great for all players to play all different levels. And uh, I suggest it. If you have the opportunity, go for it. Here we go. Turn around quickly by Bellini. Two to one here in our second chucker. Remember, this is a round robin setup. If you're just joining us, Newport and Casablanca. On the ball right here, turned around by Spinacci. And Newport in the white jersey, Pablo, working it down the right side. He's got Gino going forward. Larry, one more time. Whoa, just a little click, one click behind him. Turned around and take it forward by Roldan. And our Nick now, again, has room to work here, so he's going to take it forward. Look for the shot on goal from about a hundo. And that ball cleaned out nicely by Mannix. Now, Spinacci, that's a nice little play. Look at this little pony get around for Pablo. Pablo working daily with the Santalita breeding operation, Halo Polo Ponies, and showing you how to get around one right there. Amazing handle on that little bay pony. Wow. Turn around quickly now by Bellini on Automatica, the gray pony. Oh, good meeting there by Fred. As Bellini was going to goal, Mannix goes around, and now he's going to unleash one. Good move here, but good read by Grant Gansey. Double G, back around, 
down the center, though, and it gets met by Goldstein, but collected well by number three. And there goes Grant. Now off your screen. Now look for the big ball to the left side. Looking for Ray or Grant. Larry overrides. Backed up hard by Freddie. And he'll find Spinacci. Pablo. Getting a lot done here on the little bay. Wow. Slamming on the brakes. Laying it down right here. Now Pablo. Nice ride off though by Bellini. Bellini. Keeping the pressure on down the center. Gino's got time. Good pick up here by Goldstein. Moves from the left to the right. Now the shot on goal. And just off to the left. So Newport shooting at the goals. We click down to 245. That'll keep score two to one. And it'll be Juan Bellini to bring in the knock in here. Juan. Nobody coming to him right here, so he might as well just keep it moving. He's going to take about 100 yards, and he's going to find Grant Gansey down the center. Grant. Drag it forward one more time. Frederick's going to play in between two players. Ray comes from right to left, needs to stay on the near side. Nice attempt. Picked up by Freddie. Mannix hit the ball so clean this year. During the World Polo League. Another example of it right there. Larry now, he's got time. He checked his shoulder. Now he'll go into gear number four. Got to open up now. He's going to keep it at gear number four. Bellini in the rumble seat. Larry with the drag. Larry looking for the deep neck shot for the finish. And Larry Austin picking up. Larry picking up his second goal today. And so Larry and Ray leading the scoring five for both teams. Nice approach shot right there. Actually, that ball was more down the center than I thought when we were watching it on the side camera. Then the drone kind of shows it was right down the center. So nice approach shot, Larry, and a very good finish because that will take us into our courtesy change. Last year's uh, Santerita Abierto. We had two talented uh, teams featured, work to ride. We had student-athlete battle it to a tie. Grand Champions team won. And uh, we had Gigi, Best Class, and Sierra Harris, Mark Haley, and Heta Castanola. And then you went with the Grand Champions team with Alicia per uh, Pernera. Uh, Messiah, Gavin said he played in. Messiah actually played in. Uh, Gavin said he uh, Sandy he played. Griff Sandy he played in up in Philadelphia with uh, Mark Harris and Barto Castanola. So uh, and it was a seven-seven game. The Grand Champions two. They uh, they were actually were leading. Seven to six, hit the Castanola score with nine seconds left to finish it in a tie. But uh, always check out the Work to Ride program also. It's an amazing program out of Philadelphia. We, uh, we were there, and the CTV Sports was there to help them launch their uh, first annual fundraiser there in beautiful Philadelphia. What a what a great time that was in September. Um, and it is a lot of energy. They come out for that. And uh, it was just a great program, great to see. So check it out, Work to Ride. And um, you can, uh, of course, help out the program, which uh, which does a, does a lot for, for young youth in the inner city of Philadelphia and all over, actually. They'll allow, and they're building a brand new facility. So uh, donations are always accepted. Juan Bellini on the move, and Juan's going to get the high flag there. And a nice run by Bellini. Oh, I'm sorry, by Grant. I said to Pink Hellman, I said, whoa. And that's going to be Grant. Nice pickup. I thought, I, thought, I thought he looked too smooth to be, be Bellini. <laughs> 
<laughs> Juan would have killed me on that one. But nice shot there by Grant. Grant was put it in the bucket, actually. Nice shot here by Double G. And that'll be his first of the day. Making it three to two. They come together here in the center, and we get a quick whistle. And that'll stop the clock with uh, around 1.17 1, 1, on the clock. Now, now it'll be Bellini to do the hit. The uh, the boys in the pink helmets now. Always trying to mix this up. Now Juan, looking for Grant, actually. And stolen away by Frederick as Mannix will take it over to the right side and can try to control, but turn around quickly by Nikki. Roll Dan. Roll Dan trying to keep it moving. And it'll be picked up now by Spinacci. Pablo comes to change the field here, comes across the field. Picked up cleanly and taken forward now by Freddie. Two taps to the inside, bounces off of Ray's four-legged athlete, Bellini. Nice little steal here, and he'll regroup for Casablanca for their final run here in the second chucker. Spinacci, though, comes in for the sword fight. Pablo, and Pablo's going to take on two Casablanca players. Now Nick Rodan gets control. Back to Bellini, and nicky has got it. Rodan, he's going to take it out over center. Clock's going to tick down. He might get one more run for Grant. Good steal here by Mannix. Freddie's going to gather a few more yards on the back shot. Will it stay on the field? Yes. Nick's going to have an opportunity here. Oh, good read by Spinacci. It's Pablo sneaking around out there. That ball's going to go out of bounds, though, and that'll end our second chucker. So we will start our third chucker with a change of possession, a cop on the pitch. So we'll send everybody off for some fresh ponies, and we'll re be back for our third and final chucker of our first leg of our round robin here for the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. We're here at the Santa Rita Polo Farm where the PTF Polo ASSN Junior Tournament is being held for the first time ever at this location. And I mean, could you get a more beautiful venue? Probably not. The tournament includes players of all ages, starting with the youngest at just two years old and the oldest at 20 years old. So you've got all ages, all skill levels, and a whole lot of fun. Let's go check it out. Reminds me of my days when I was in that position playing the kids tournament and for us it was, it meant the world so uh, I'm very happy to be here supporting my son and, and other kids as well because I think they, they really enjoy this and, and, and for them it's even more important than, than for us probably playing the 26 or the 22. Well, that's a wrap on the PTF Polo ASSN Juniors Tournament at the Santa Rita Polo Farm. So much incredible talent coming up through the ranks. The future is certainly bright for the sport of polo. Now, for more information on the PTF, head to polotraining.org. And, of course, head to Chucker TV for all of our awesome content, including full game broadcasts. Welcome back here for our third Chucker. There's Grant Gansey. Big smile on his face. Love double G. Beautiful, good chestnut ponies riding there. Good shot. I love his new helmet. Always has the American flag style in some way. Actually, his, his, his last helmet, um, I was told by Casablanca, some of the, some of the uh, group there, that that was actually one of the most requested helmets 
that uh, uh, people wanted to have for themselves. So congratulations to Matt, uh, to, to uh, Double G being, uh, being an amazing designer. Uh, people uh, enjoying his style. So that's, uh, that's cool to know. And always a big shout out to Casablanca, one of our title sponsors, and uh, as also down at the uh, World Polo League Beach Polo World Cup. If you missed that one, congratulations to Blackfin, as uh, it was Grant Gansey, Nick Rodan, and one seat to Bellini against Satai, Melissa, Melly in the final. Juan Bellini, Max. Charlton, and uh, what a game it was. And uh, very successful. Big shout out to Tito, Edenzi, the whole crew, Yan and Nick Frank. And uh, but what a time it was. And uh, the surface was just amazing. The pole was so fast. I mean, it was hard to keep, t keep, uh, keep up on the score at times. It was just uh, unbelievable. And uh, always a great party down there in South Beach. If you, uh, if you didn't get to go this year, well, put it on your schedule for next year. And uh, always write in April so you can uh, keep an eye on it. You know, scheduling does change sometimes. Back and forth here in the third chunk. Remember, the winner will sit. The runner-up will continue against Team Santa Rita. With Melissa Gansey, Riley, Nito Uranga, and Alejandro. If he's Estrada, here comes Freddie Maddox. Maddox driving the ball deep. He's been doing it all season. He got a lot of loft on that one, though, as he lays it up in the air, and it's going to be picked up here and turned around by Rodan Nick. Nick now is going to laser beam it off the pony, though. Turned around. Bellini gets the position. Bellini's going to put it back down the boards, and that ball will bounce over the sideboards there, and we'll have a change of possession. A cop on the pitch, and away we go. Freddie, no problem. One tap, and he's going to keep it moving here, trying to keep Newport. Newport, Gene, uh, Larry Austin, Gene Goldstein, Pablo Spinacci, and Frederick Mannix. Casa in the darker jerseys. With Ray, Rafu, Grant Gansey, Nick Dan, Juan Bellini. Three to one, very close match here. And our first leg. First three chuckers of nine. That'll happen this morning. Remember, then you can join us this afternoon. We will have a straight six chuckers with Sebu Khan and Trevieso. Bellini, tap to the inside. Might be making it harder on himself. No problem. As Juan... Takes it out to the far right side. Deep, deep neck shot for the finish here. And, but has no problem as everything just opened up there. Like Moses. Spreading the sea right there. He got in there and everybody was like, I'm getting out of the way. There's a good shot of Juan. And a good finish. Bellini will pick up his first of the day. So everybody on... The scoreboard is set for Mr. Nick Rodan for the Casablanca team, making it four to two. Spinacci going down the center here. Matt <laughs> and Matt and they're clean by Bellini. Oh, and Pablo going for the near side. Didn't want to foul there, so he stays on his side. Juan Bellini on the breakaway here, but then Pablo regroups. Near side back shot down the center. Not much angle, but it's going to work out as, oh, I'm sorry. He's backed up there by Freddie. Now picked up by Pablo. Now it's going to be Gino. You got the white jerseys and the white helmets. Got me going crazy here. Now they go back to the inside. It's going to be Nick. Great angle there. Can we get a Casa? Oh, well read by Fred. Mannix now. Nice ball, but way to the left side, but well hit there. Now they take it to the fire. And Gene, good stick where Goldstein as he turns the corner there. No problem. Ooh, and then Nick goes to take it off. And I think it went off a of Ray's pony, though. So he might be all right there. We'll see if they go with the safety on this or not. I'm not sure who it went off of. 
It looks like, yeah, it is going to be a... We're going to use the courtesy change anyways with 321. And there's, uh, well, good shot of Double G's old helmet is Roki, his main trainer, right there wearing his old style. And that was a style that uh, so many fans, I guess, loved. Love that American flag. Oh, both of them look great. I actually love the new design, too. Always representing the U.S. So we'll see here. I think it's a knock-in, but we'll go to check. I don't know sure if they went with uh, who the ball went off of here. You might get a safety out of it. It looks like, uh, yeah, I guess it is going to be a safety. So you get a pen penalty six on it. And, uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to. So the bad luck there for Casa, but an opportunity for Newport. And, uh, well, you know the safety. If you're new to the game, like to like in soccer. I always use that as an analogy. Defending team hits it over their own end line, and you, uh, well, you bring it out to the 60. For a penalty four, such as a penalty four, we call it a penalty six. And on the penalty six, it'll be a 60-yard shot. And it's going to be Fred. He's been hitting the ball well. Whoa, that ball is moving very, very fast. I couldn't even see it. And looks like it's going to go out to the far side, though. And Wamblini will bring it in. Juan. Back to the inside. Options left, options right. Ray Rafu down the center. Where's Ray? Uh, Bellini's going to use the left side. That's Nick. But well read in here by Fred. Well done, Freddie. Ooh, then overrides. And now Nick. And you're going to have a three on two now on the breakaway here. If Nick can laser it, he does. Out of the air. And look at this. Grant Gansy already done. He's saying, go forward, Ray. Here it comes. There's the pass. He's going to keep it to himself, those races. I'm going, I'm going to fall into the rumble seat, Grant. And that actually works. Grant gets it going across the center and comes off the cane, tries to put the tail shot in, picked up cleanly by Austin. Larry. He'll leave it for Fred. Fred is going to put the hammer down on this one. Here comes Goldstein. Gene. On the move, and he is grooving right now. He's going to open this one up. Well done, Gino. That's a nice approach shot. Look for the finish. And well done, Goldstein. And Gino get the high flag. And a great power polo play there by Newport as Larry finds Frederick. Frederick puts it out to Goldstein, and then Gene drops the hammer and is always good at speed. Here's a great shot of him coming here on our end zone cam on the finish. Pulls out the putter, and uh, he'll get his first of the day. So that'll make four to three here. Casa with a bit of an advantage with a uh, minute 25 left. Remember, this is the final chucker of the first leg. Ray and Nick and Gene and Nick says, I'll control it. Nick, round the corner, Nick Aru, Nick. Spinacci's going to go back. Nick's going to slam on the brakes. Everybody's going flies by, and now will control it. Now he's got players downfield. Roldan, look for the outlet pass. There it is, down the center. Nice ball. Well met. Oh, good play by Grant Gansey here. Double G with the steal. Double G looking to put it away. Oh, that's good play, Grant Gansey. And not just getting the steal against a very strong player in Mannix, but then have the ability to turn it back upfield and the horsepower to keep it out in front as Mannix had to go for the forward hook just to try to hit his mallet forward. Watch it. See how he goes Tries to swing forward, watch, like there. He just tried to hit his mallet forward, above. Good thinking. Just not enough time, and that'll end our third chucker and our last chucker of our first leg. So, 
Casablanca. They'll go ahead and take a seat. And when we return, we will have Newport in the white jerseys going up against Santa Rita. Stay with us here on CTV Sports. Foot golf, it's a kind of life, and also it's a combination about golf and football. Uh, so I got into sport through social media. Someone approached me on Twitter and said, have you tried it? Um, I'd never heard of it at that point. So I went to my local course and tried it and just completely fell in love with the game. This is not as easy as it looks on your body. It's a lot of kicking. We don't normally kick this many hard kicks in soccer. Uh, for me, this and the U.S. Open are the two top U.S. tournaments. Um, it's something we all look forward to every single year. Great fun, and I think everyone will enjoy it when they try it. They just you can't not have fun. Um, when you set goals at the start of the season and you're able to achieve them at the end of the year, uh, I think I can speak for everyone and say when we, when we set goals and we make the sacrifices that we make, which a lot of people don't see, and then it all comes to fruition, it's, it's a good feeling. I literally live, breathe, football. The Lennox. When you walk into the lobby, you will see the tranquil work. You get it out from the fast pace of work of Miami Beach. We have a hotel of 119 rooms, all of them with different touches and different personality. Very based on our greenery and eco-friendly environment. I'm very proud of our restaurant. It's, it's Mediterranean inspired by our executive chef, Hernan Gricini, who is a Michelin star experienced chef with international background. Our pool, very small, very intimate. Remember, Lennox is the quiet and tranquil place in the craziness of South Miami Beach. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players fieldside and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything that goes on or near a horse, you're lucky to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. Okay, welcome back, everybody, CTV Sports. This is the uh, Santa Rita Abierto 2023. And uh, as we're starting uh, well, five teams, so we'll start our first game with a round robin. If you're just joining us, uh, Casablanca with uh, Ray Raful, Grant Gansey, Nick Rodan, and Juan Bellini. They edged out uh, Newport in the white jerseys that we will be playing right now. Larry Austin, Gene Goldstein, Pablo Spinacci, Fred Mannix. And uh, <clears throat> five to three, so plus two will go to the Casablanca team if needed. Winner of this will play in the final on Sunday in this round robin. Winner of our game this afternoon, Sebucon, Trevieso, uh, they'll play in the final. And then, of course, every all uh, the uh, other three teams will play in the just for the fun of it subsidiary final and uh, that'll all be on on Sunday so you can join us starts uh, begins at 10 a.m. and uh, remember the round robin three chuckers of polo so you need to come out firing on all cylinders no time to wait around when you're playing in the round robin and we haven't seen a round robin in a while and uh, we, uh, oh, all kinds of tournaments going on. We uh, we play the uh, Casablanca Spring Challenge. Then we have the Eastern Challenge, the Memorial, and then the World Poly Polo Pride. And uh, I heard, I heard someone told me that that our general manager was was boot, booting up, as they say, getting ready to go 
for the World Pole League Polo Pride. So keep an eye out for Mr. Kale Newman. He's going to be back in the saddle. So that's uh, it's always a great tournament, a lot of energy for that. So he makes you join us. That'll be our final. Looks like Gaston, we're ready to go. Gaston Dorniak, as that's our mount official. We have our second man in the stands, Steve Lane, uh, with the iPad in the... Oh, Melly says, let's play polo, guys. <laughs> she comes out firing right here. Let's go through it. Uh, Centerita, Melissa, wearing the one. Uh, Riley, Gansey, wearing the number two. Mariano Uranga Nito, we call him, wearing the number three. And Alejandro Nuiz try to wear number four. And there you go, Melly. Gets out in front and says, let me show you how you do this, guys. You need to get out and start hitting the ball, get running and gunning early. And Melly takes it right out of the bowling and uh, gets the finish. On the black pony right here. Oh, <laughs> not much angle there. Wow. That's, a, that's an easy goal. I didn't realize that ball was so close to the end line. Uh, that ball was actually a couple inches off the end line. So well done, Melissa. Now Larry says, come on, let's get it going here, Larry. And there comes Gino. Gene keeping it out front. Alejandro will turn the corner. Now it gets going to be picked up by Spinacci. Now Uranga. Mariano, he's going to open it up quickly. Nito, big ball right here as Frederick will get out in front, but it looks like Melissa might have about five lengths on everybody. There's the approach to the center. She's got to go from right to left, back for the left to the right, cleaned up out of there by Mannix. Nice back shot by Freddie. Nobody home, though. Where is everybody? There you go. Larry now. Larry gets a piece of it. Nito will turn the corner. And Riley will fall into the rumble seat. Shot on goal by Uranga, but that ball goes just wide. The uh, knock it coming here will be by Frederick Mannix. Big ball by Mannix. Look at this ball to the outside, and this is what you want. You want to get Gene Golsey going forward here. G Riley's going to press him here, try to get the hook. Well, keeps the pressure on him, and that gives Aranga time to come, and Nito will take it across the field and regroup for Santarita. Mariano, good rotation here. Gino goes for it. Now Nito. Going to put his head down and drive this one. That ball. Backed up by Larry. Moved along a little bit further by Frederick. Stolen away by Nito. And looking for one of the ladies. And he's got Riley. Well done, Riley. From the right to the left. Keep, keeps it moving forward. But Frederick will control. Snap one down the center. Nobody home. Sep Alejandro. Estrada. Looking for the angle shot. Bounces off a pony. You're running a no play there. And a good thinking, Nito. He'll stay out of it. Loose ball play. Leave it for Larry. Larry with the one-timer. But good positioning by Estrada. Alejandro now also playing in the World Polo League this season. Coming off an injury, but doing well. Uranga has been here all season, playing and also playing in all different leagues and also helping with the polo school. Wow, oh, that's a pretty approach shot. Melissa Ganzi, perfectly approached. Oh, right in front, and she pulled the trigger just to the left, just off to the left. Bad luck, but a nice approach shot there, and that'll take us into our courtesy change. Our first courtesy change of our... Second leg. Remember, we were talking about the work the road ride program. They do, uh, you know, they are, they do like to raise funds and bring in 
bringing awareness to a national caliber program using polo, you know, as a vehicle to help low-income youth in the Philadelphia area. And as I said, but people from all over come play, and they have generated amazing the amount of players that have come out of there, and they do a great job um, with the kids and the whole program. So once again, take a look at that Work to Ride program. We uh, Grand Chain Pro Cup, several top, um, top and upcoming players and Patrons are competing this uh, this spring season. Very competitive and emphasis on fun season. And that's what it's about in the spring. And uh, during the spring season, amateur players, you know, they get a chance to uh, play against and with, with some of the world's top players. And it's geared towards improving polo skills and having fun. And you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. So come on out and have some fun. Raise your polo skills. Also, the Polo On Demand program is in effect. So if you don't have any horses, just go ahead and go to gcpolo.com, and you'll see the numbers, as I told you, at the end of the website. And those two men, those two gentlemen, will get you involved in the Polo On Demand program. You just come on down. Bring your sunscreen, suntan lotion, and uh, enjoy place of polo. Spend some time in southern Florida. The weather has been amazing. And as I said, the fields and the polo, so much fun. And you'll enjoy the Polo On Demand program. It's uh, it's the uh, most unique program in the game of polo. Loose ball play. We got Gene Goldstein going forward here with 235 on the clock. Gene, good pick up here. Well done. Keeping it out in front of Uranga. Gino, that's the approach. Oh, that ball will go by itself. Well done, Goldstein. And Gene will pick up his first here in the second leg. He's got two on the day, one in, one in the third chucker of the first leg. And this is a perfect approach shot. Love the perfect approach shots, the ones that just roll in. And this is how you do it. Chestnut Pony with the bald face. Very smooth there for Goldstein. And we got to see uh, Gene's family, Melina, his beautiful wife, and their children. They were down at the beach polo. Just spectating this year, but now Goldstein going for a second goal. This is what he did in the first leg. Once he gets going, but Alejandro, he knows it, so he puts the leg on him, gets him moving, and Estrada will turn the pink jerseys and head north. This field running north and south, field three. Big ball by Mannix, looking for Spinacci, stolen away by Estrada. Alejandro, <clears throat> one time down the center. Loose ball play, Riley. Good pick up, Riley. Riley. She's on the fly, Riley. That one skips over a mallet, taken out by Frederick, and he'll go into the neck with it. Check in the field. Still keeping it moving here. And there's going to be Goldstein again. Gene keeping this one a little bit closer. Now he leaves it for L.A. Larry going to fire one from about 60 yards out. That ball will trickle across the end line. And you might get one more knock, and we will see if Estrada gets it done in time. And it looks like he's going to get it done just in time as he takes that one just off the line. Estrada down the center, looking for one of the Gansey girls. Backed up nicely. Taken forward now by Frederick, and he is in range right now. Let's see the big neck shot, Frederick. That ball will lay just inside the 60, taken out by Estrada. Alejandro's going to gather a few more yards as the clock goes tick, tick, tick. And that'll end it right there. So that's going to end our first chucker of our second leg. And, uh, well, only one goal scored by Goldstein. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, we on ball one five. Melissa also. So one to one as we're having fun. Stay with us here on CTV Sports. Okay, here we go. Uh, second chucker of our second leg. Santarita Abierto, round robin. Uh, Santarita, Melissa Ganzi, Riley Ganzi, Nito Uranga, and Alejandro Navija Estrada. Newport, Gene Goldstein, Larry Austin. Well, actually, Larry Austin playing one, Gino playing two. Uh, Pablo Spinacci playing three, and Frederick Mannix playing the number four. And... Uh, you know, if you look at play summer polo, well, guess what? Aspen Valley Polo Club is uh, key, keying up. The Aspen Valley Polo Club celebrating another milestone when it hits its uh, opens in its 10th season. Wow. So again, time flies and having fun. 10th season, what a place. You know, with the majestic 12,960-foot summit of Mount Sopris as a backdrop, uh, and it is beautiful, Polo returns to the valley when the club hosts 11 tournaments in July and August. The season opens with its traditional Independence Cup. And uh, on July 5th, last year, we had over 100 people at the uh, our first tournament it was on a, I think we had on Saturday, was it? I can't remember exactly what day it was, but it was amazing the amount of people. The uh, the Valley has embraced polo in Aspen, Colorado. And uh, if you've never been, that is another place if uh, you don't want to bring your horses to do and get involved in the polo on demand program. Riley Gansey on the move. Well done, Riley. That's a nice approach shot. She keeps it out in front of Mannix. Ooh, gets a piece of it, but off to the right side there. Frederick will fall in line and take it forward here for Newport. Remember, Casablanca beating Newport by two goals. So those pluses and minuses will come in at the end if needed. And uh, that puts a Newport at a minus two and, and the Casa at a plus two just on the win. The Casa in the tent. They'll play against Santa Rita for the final three chuckers of our round robin. Melly, Melissa now on the gray pony. She takes it forward. Nice stroke, Melissa. That ball might go on its own. Where's it at? <laughs> oh, yeah, it will. And I could feel it. As I can see how well she hit it, that that ball was at least going to carry. 
And look at this. That ball carries a good 65, 70 yards. She pushes <laughs> Spinacci wide, and she had Riley in the rumble seat, so no problem. Well done by the Gandy girls. Keep it and move it. And Melissa picking up her second goal. Make it a two to one. Yeah, the uh, you never been to Aspen, Colorado in the summertime, July through August. That is a uh, an amazing place. It's actually the world's uh, destination spot for summer polo. It's attracted top players, including Guns, Alito Pietas, Nick Rodan, Alejandro Nuiz, Estrada, Tamacho Pietas, Jason Crowder, among others, as well as uh, world class horses. And it has just grown to be an exceptional and amazing and also great youth polo. The juniors, they play three times a week. So if you have young players, young polo stars that you would like to play, they have the opportunity. Nice pick up here by Riley. She'll work it back to the center. Well done, Riley. Nice pickup. Once, twice. Look for the finish. Riley, there's the approach. And just off to the side. But a nice run. And she'll keep it inside the 60. Keep the pressure on Spinacci. Frederick. Spinacci and Mannix doing a great job passing the ball back and forth and getting Larry and Gene out front. Larry, he'll override. Turn around by Estrada now. Left in here by Alejandro. And he'll look for Riley again. Riley. Comes from the center, gets a piece of it, goes across the center, though. Nice pick up here. Good ball control by Manic. Frederick. Big shout out to Fred Sr. If you're watching today, Fred, we love you and miss you. I know you're out there in Palm Desert doing your thing as he was always tuning into the World Polo League game. Larry, 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 Larry. And go lasso as Larry Austin will pick up his third of the day first here in the second leg. And again, it's a great approach shot. Love how Larry comes from right to left. You notice right here, he's going to hit to the far post. Boom, always hit to the far post. Bring your horse over like that. Then you have the easy finish. Well done, Larry. It's always easier said than done, but if you do run the goal, it's always easier to hit to that far post and then come from left to right on your horse than to have to pick up that ball and uh, go for the deep neck shot. Grand Champions Polo Club, GCPC, we call it. It's spring, it's a spring league here, and now uh, it's medium goal practice games. And you get at least one a week, so it's always a lot of fun to get in there and have some practices, more relaxed style. Stick and ball sessions available during the week also. Teams get two medium goal tournament games every weekend, and uh, so you can count on that if you can't be here during the week. <clears throat> Amblins and umpires all for all tournament games. Keep everybody safe and happy. Turnkey operation, turnkey tournament polo with uh, some of the top professionals in the world playing polo on some of the uh, most prestigious and well-manicured fields. And you're looking at them right here. And uh, the club sponsors social events. You never know. There's always something going on every weekend for all players and excellent trophies for all the teams every weekend. And that is something that the Aspen Valley Polo Club, along with the Grand Champion Polo Club, is at a high level. The actual trophies and awards that are given to uh, the players is just uh, spectacular. Spring season is uh, will be live streamed, so tell a friend if you're at the game. Troy, uh, Troy, if you're listening, tell a friend. I know you're out there listening. And it is a live stream worldwide, Wellington-based, Chucker TV, CTV Sports. And I'll be doing all your announcements for the spring season. My name is Dale Schwetz. And you never know, though, we always have a special guest 
bounce in every so often. My executive producer, Mike Ferrer, uh, says, you know, let's, uh, let's change it up a little bit. We did that this season with CTV Sports, and we had a lot of great feedback as uh, Yan Eric Frank, my co-partner, co-commentator, and a very good friend working here in the CTV studios all season. We covered everything from six goals to 26 goals. We did over 125 games, 125 broadcasts this season. And uh, so you definitely had your, you definitely had opportunities to watch Polo this season, and we hope you enjoyed it. All right, looks like we got everybody back, two to two. After that goal from Larry, and after that courtesy change, and here we go, Goldstein, Gene. Oh, good pickup, Gino, out of the air. Tail shot by Spinacci, or by, by Frederick. I like the thought process. Nobody home, and it'll be taken out by Alejandro. Strata. Big ball by Alejandro. I got to tell you, Alejandro, Alejandro, Strata, they put him seven goals. They put him from eight to seven, and I think he's been playing more like nine all season. So, you know, that does happen. I was surprised they put him down, but, man, he has been playing spectacular polo. Here we go, though. On the move, though, Newport trying to break the tie here with 2.23 on the clock. Riley, nice hook on Larry. And they come together, and a good ride off, and turned around by Nito. Good, good meeting there by Fred, by Spinacci, keeping it going by Uranga. Mariano. Mariano, wow, he's going to launch this one, and Melly's probably out in front. Yeah, there she is, always in the perfect position. Melissa turns her shoulders nicely, lays it right inside the 40, look for the finish. Oh, just on the end line, turned around. But a good run here by Santa Rita, but we might have a three-on-one, and here they come. But you know what, Estrada's the perfect guy to have back there. Alejandro, oh, he overrides a little bit. Larry on the near side, nice pickup. Now he'll take it forward. Looking for Spinacci. Cleaned up. And controlled. Nice hook there by Larry on Estrada. Back to Larry. Larry looking for Gene. But Urango, well done, Mariano, with the nice little half shot. Now he'll keep it going. He's going to open it up and watch his bay pony run. But Gene Goldstein says, yeah, watch the chest. Now, oh, Gene got there before him. Couldn't get back to the ball. And Urango is going to find Melissa on the gray. Mally, there's the approach inside the 60. 45 seconds. Now, that ball's going to go on its own once again. Melissa shooting from way out. Her second goal from over 40 to 50 yards. And here's the approach on the, uh, on the drone. He gets it just inside the 60, this one. So that one was, was from about 58 yards. Well done. And that's going to take us out of the chucker. I don't believe they're going to have time for a bowl in. No, as the clock goes tick, tick, tick. So that'll open it up. Three, two. After two, we'll be back for our third and final chucker of our second leg of the Santarita Abierto. Here at the Santa Rita Polo Farm where the PTF Polo ASSN Junior Tournament is being held for the first time ever at this location. And I mean, 
could you get a more beautiful venue? Probably not. The tournament includes players of all ages, starting with the youngest at just two years old and the oldest at 20 years old. So you've got all ages, all skill levels, and a whole lot of fun. Let's go check it out. Reminds me of my days when I was in that position playing the kids tournament and for us it was, it meant the world so uh, I'm very happy to be here supporting my son and, and other kids as well because I think they, they really enjoy this and, and, and for them it's even more important than, than for us probably playing the 26 or the 22. Well, that's a wrap on the PTF Polo ASSN Juniors Tournament at the Santa Rita Polo Farm. So much incredible talent coming up through the ranks. The future is certainly bright for the sport of polo. Now, for more information on the PTF, head to polotraining.org. And, of course, head to Chucker TV for all of our awesome content, including full game broadcasts. Okay, third Chuck reaction, second leg of the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. And uh, spring polo. Hope you're enjoying it here on CTV Sports and everybody live at the field there. Uh, being entertained by our mounted official guest, Stone Thorniak, and always with a joke on hand, Mr. Steve Lane. And he's somewhere out there. I think he's in uh, the uh, CTV Sports van. He's the van man. So keep him alive, keep him cool in there. And uh, remember the, yeah, a van man with the iPad in hand. And when I say the iPad in hand, I mean in real time. And that's the way he's staying. Can you get the plan, man? I got gotcha. you. Okay, so uh, remaining spring schedule, um, well, you know, it's always subject to change because of weather. This is Southern Florida. You know what they say in the islands, man. Wait 15 minutes, the weather will change. But it's been beautiful. We've had great uh, weather. But as I said earlier, we uh, we have the Casablanca Spring Challenge. And that's because it's supposed to be May 10th to the 14th. But it could change. Be careful. We'll, we'll let you know. You can always uh, get on the app. Get on the uh the text, you can sign up for the text on the on the uh, website and uh, you get personal text. It will tell you everything. And um, and also then we go to the Eastern Challenge, uh, then the Memorial, and then the World Polo League, Polo Pride, and uh, the highlighted event of the spring season. All right, here we go, though, as this is a big chucker. Here, if Santa Rita can hold on, we'll have a true final against Casablanca and Santa Rita. And if Newport is the win, then we got to keep track of all the net goals. And here we go. Melissa says, shut up, Dale Strauss. I'm taking it to the hoop. As Melly right in front now. She's going to have to go for the tail or turn it. We'll see what she does. She slows it. Oh, oh well done. Turns it right back. And takes it down <laughs> and picks up her fourth goal. Well done, Melissa. Good thinking there. I think they thought she was going to go for the back shot, so they all pulled to block it. And then she just pulled up and went the other way with it and had a clean route to the goal. Good thinking, Melissa. Frederick could make a play, and, and Spernacci was dumbfounded. He said, well, I thought uh, Melissa's going to make a tail shot there, but I like it. So that'll make it four to two, two goal lead here in our third and final chuckers. Riley. She gets a piece of it. Off to the outside, left in there in control now by Frederick. Mannix flips it forward. Big ball. 
And that one will lay inside for L.A. Larry Austin, and Larry has been fabulous around the goal, picking up goal number four on the day, goal number two here in our second leg, and he has been spectacular shooting that goal. Very similar to Melissa's shooting today. They get inside that 60, the nice little half putter shot. And getting the finish there. All right, here we go. Let's see if uh, Newport can get one. Is uh, try to get the equalizer here. Back to Larry. Spinacci will put it down the left side. Well done. Look at this, Frederick Mannix. Oh, Frederick, seven times out of the air. And that reminds me of a game that I played with, with Frederick Mannix, with Mark Gandy, and Gondolito Pieres. And he took the ball out of the air seven times like that one time. And one of the best goals I've ever seen in my life. And then finished it with a neck shot. Melissa Gandy, though, she's going to take it down. But picking one pull, it's stolen away now by Spinacci. Pablo, he'll turn it back up for Newport. Looking for Frederick with the hot stick. On the far side, Larry, he'll override. Gene's going to get a piece of it. Turn it around quickly on the gray pony. Uranga, Nito. Nito looking for Melly. Melly in a good spot. And that ball went a little bit further than she wanted. She was going to slow it down. Drags it inside. Now look for the next shot. And did that go off the post? A deep neck shot there by Melissa. That'll take us to our final courtesy change. In the third chucker. And they'll hold on that one goal lead. So four to three. You know, I told you the pole school is in a, uh, well, still uh, working right now. It's down, now located. And uh, if you remember, it actually was uh, at the former uh, Pony Express facility, but we now it is the polo school. And um, it operates in Wellington January through May. So, and September through November. So uh, we're still going on. So if you guys want to learn how to play polo, you can, uh, you can get in touch with the, uh, the boys and uh, get those numbers for you. Standalone uh, USPA sanctioned polo club. The polo school is a standalone USPA sanctioned polo club. It is thriving. It's uh, Dedicated to teaching polo to all ages. When we say that, I mean it. I've been out there. I work as a, one of the instructors, and we teach all ages, particularly gr grassroots youth. And its mission is to provide individual opportunities in polo at every economic and ability level. So it doesn't matter your, uh, your levels there. And... Um, the Polo School has uh, nurtured several junior men and women pole players. They're now playing as pro and amateur ranks since its inception. And I can, uh, I can vouch for that because I have worked with a lot of players that have moved on from the Polo School. They started in the Polo School, and that's the best. You know, that is the most gratifying situation you could be in when you own the Polo School. All right, Gene Goldstein looking for the equalizer. There's the approach shot. Gene Goldstein, can I get a coast to coast? Oh, man, I wanted the butter and toast. I got the coast to coast. Turned around quickly now by Estrada. Alejandro going to find Riley. Riley on the move. Now, Nito falls into the rumble seat behind Uranga. He gets a piece of it. 
backed up Cleve. Oh, it bounces off the pony there. And it's going to be Melissa on the dead ball play. Broken play there. Melissa, Melly looking to hit back to Riley. She might get it out there. Riley, well done on the hook. Tries to get the hook done there on the near side. <clears throat> and it'll be Spinacci. Pablito. Pablo. Now looking for goal scene. You got to be careful, Gene. He just had a great run, Gino. Looking for goal number three. Turned around quickly by Uranga. Mariano going to get a good shot on it. It's going to, oh, they got Melissa out in front of Melly now by herself on the Bay Pony. There's the first pickup, and that ball is going to go by itself once again. Will it carry Melissa right in front of goal? And Melly will get, ooh, that one goes just wide. Just bad luck there. But a nice run again by Santa Rita. They'll keep their one goal lead. We click down in a minute. So Fred Mannix, final run of the second leg here in our third chucker of the second leg. Larry, Larry's going to get the opportunity. Austin. Larry, good pickup off the boards. Going to keep it out in front. Gene working hard on Alejandro. Look at Riley, though. Riley coming back quickly on defense. Good ride off, Riley. Well done. That's a game-saving ride off by Riley Ganzi. They'll leave the ball for Mariano, and Uranga's going to open up the chestnut. Here comes number three. Uranga, he's got Melly out in front. Big ball by Nito. Melly's going to have a time to come from right to left. Good pickup, Melly. Nice approach. Is this one to go inside the 60? Will it stay on the field? Yes, it will. Shot on goal. And then that one will go. Well, I guess he's wide, but it doesn't matter because time is going to click it down here, and that will end it. So four to three. And a very tight match here for our second leg. <clears throat> New Porter, one thing, Gene Goldstein, Larry Austin. Here we go. Here's our uh, end of the round uh, two stats. It was four to three. Shots on goal, Santa Rita, they were shooting on goal. They had nine shots on goal compared to five from Newport. Knock-ins, uh, the, uh, well, there you go. That's the Newport knocked in five times compared to two knock-ins by Santa Rita. But uh, more shots taken by Santa, Santa Rita. Throw-ins, well, won by Newport. So very interesting. They held on very well there. And those are your end of round two stats. So I want to thank uh, Newport with Gene Gold, Larry Austin, Gene Goldstein, Fred Mannix, and Pablo Spinacci. Uh, great job, guys. And uh, fun, fun watching that team go. But at the moment... We have a true final being set up here for our third and final leg. So stay with us as we'll have Casablanca against Santa Rita. And the winner of that game will head to the finals on Sunday. Stay with us here on CTV Sports. <laughs>
All right, welcome back, everybody, for our third and final round. And um, so the uh, goal, let's see, the Casablanca, they uh, they won their first game uh, five to three, and um, against Newport. That made them, uh, they gave them plus two goals there on that. And then you had the uh, Newport went down minus two, and then Newport went against Santa Rita, and it was a uh, one goal difference. So uh, Santa Rita goes plus one on it, and the uh, looks like the uh, Newport team. They go down to minus one there, so they'll go out of minus three if you had to go to net goals. But otherwise, right here, we got true, true, true final for you here. Winner of this three, Sharkers, will head to the finals on Sunday. So this is a good one. Couldn't ask for a better matchup here with Casablanca and Santa Rita. Going for it. Casa Santarita, Melissa Ganzi, Riley Ganzi, Nito, Uranga, Mariano, and Alejandro Navija Estrada. And then Casa Blanca with Ray, Raful, Frank Ganzi, Nick Rodan, and Juan Bellini. And this is a good matchup. If three Chuckers of Polo winner will head to the finals. Runners up will head to the subsidiary final, the just for the fun of it on Sunday. Here we go, Ray Rafu with his first opportunity. Ray gets a piece of it. And Riley, who's everywhere, and man, when I say everywhere, she is everywhere. <laughs> she loves playing offense and defense, man. She rides so well. And uh, you got to keep an eye on her. Melly's been pulling the team in the front. And uh, I think, uh, well, Riley wears the number two the way you should wear the number two. You got to be a worker. So she's out there running and gunning. Here we go. These three chuckers back and forth here early. And it's going to be Alejandro, and he's going to launch one from way out. Looks like that ball will stay on the field. And they'll run the corner. It'll be Nick. Rodan, going to find Wamba, look to find the right double G. Grant Gans, he's going to open up the chest up, honey. Oh, we got to go. Look at Ray coming in hot also. Nito's going to come back, though. Put the pressure on Grant. They slam it down. Grant goes back to the inside. Tries to scoot by, and Grant picks up his first here in our final leg. The Grant's third of the day as a uh, nice little play here as he comes and slams down. Nothing that Uranga could do. Pretty much just uh, without fouling. He had to give him one play right there. Grant takes a nice tap shot and uh, very smooth four-legged athlete there as Ray was down there helping. Rafu was running and gunning as when uh, Double G broke loose, Grant now, he's going to look for Nick going forward, but this is going to be picked up by Alejandro. Turned around quickly. Controlled. By Estrada. Alejandro. Loose ball play. Going to be picked up and turned by Grant. He'll keep control. Now, they all come together. Stolen away by Nito. Well done, Uranga. Out of the air. Oh, yeah, everybody's stabbing for that one. As Nick is going to get control. And that ball, I don't know if it went off a of Ray or not, but it definitely goes in there. We'll have to check on the replay here. Nick shot that ball. Ray was in the vicinity. Let me let's see if this ball doesn't bounce off of Ray. As Ray was trying to get out of the way from left to right. Nah, no, very clean as he gets out of there just perfectly. Good riding by Ray. Perfect shot by Nick. Nick will pick up his first goal of the day. 
So everybody on Casablanca scoring goals today around the corner as the Grand Gansey with the hot stick here early. Move back to the inside. It's bad luck there. That ball bounces off the pony. They come together here. Taking it the opposite way. Now it's going to be picked up and controlled by Alejandro. Strada looking to get loose here. Uh-oh, they got a four on three. Here they come. Uranga. Mariano is going to use the inside of the field and open it up quickly. Back to the inside, though, and it'll be Nick Roldan. Roldan to control. Nick now. Takes it forward, lays it down inside. Now it's going to be well controlled. Opened up there by Grand Kinsey. Oh, and we have a jousting match, but Nick will win that one. Keeps it on the field. Oh, Nick Roldan. K. Golasso NR is that is a spectacular goal. Trust me, this is not an easy goal. This ball was about three yards off the end line. He opens it with the back shot, an open back shot with angle. Keep an eye on the replay here. Just an amazing shot by Roldan. Alejandro in a good spot to try to save it. Just did not have the ability to get there. We were talking about the Polo School, and if you want to be involved in the Polo School, and as I said, you get more information on the Polo School from the Director of Operations, Juan Bellini, or our General Manager, Cale Newman. You can get all their numbers at uh, gcpolo.com. So uh, go on and jump on that. They'll also tell you about the uh, Polo On Demand program, and... Um, you can get, uh, well, with the polar demand program, it just as it says, you can demand whatever you would like, whatever kind of scenario or polo session you would like. You want to learn how to use a stick and ball or just ride, that's fine. You want to play 26 gold polo with a full team around you, they can get it done. Polo on demand. Uh, amazing season here, nor winter season. Covering everything from 6, 8, 12, 20, and 26 gold polo. We had WCT, too. The Women's League was very successful. I want to congratulate all the ladies, um, especially Hope Mariano, for, uh, well, getting that pinnacle already, 10 goals. She's on her way, but doing an amazing job playing in the FIP. And uh, Melissa Gansey. She is uh, one of the biggest supporter of women's polo in the world. She was very good friends with Sonny Hale and uh, carrying on that legacy. And uh, she does an amazing job. As you can see, is Riley, her daughter, playing very good polo. And, of course, big shout-out to all the ladies out there as uh, women's polo being, uh, well, the largest growing part of the game uh, today is uh, women's. The ladies, and they have been phenomenal. Good to watch. Very cool. Congratulations, all them. Here we go. Back from the center after our first of three cursey changes. Those will be our final three chuckers. And three to zero here. So Casablanca opening up very quickly. And... Uh, Get in control. Riley says, come on, let's get it going. Good shot, Riley Gansey. That one's going to go on its own. Oh, Riley's still in front. Well done, Riley. Good job. Nice shot. Gets back to it. Good riding for the finish. Riley will get her first goal of the day. But more importantly, she has been working super hard as a defender, this ball goes just wide. Watch this, shuts it down. Flips it back. Perfect. Keeps her, keeps her mallet on it closely. Well done. Instead of trying to shoot it, she dragged that ball back. I actually learned something there. That was really cool. 
to drag that ball back, not just shoot it, but to drag it. That way, if anybody comes to try to steal it, you can basically, you know, redirect the ball. So well done, Riley. Here we go. Three to one. Click it down to 115. Shot on goal by Uranga. It's taken out by Roldan. And they'll turn the corner. Nikki. Big ball. Looking for the big ball. Doesn't get as far as he wants. Take it forward now by Grant. And it'll be controlled by Nick and moving him forward. Ray, Ralph Fool on the move. Ray, good pickup, Ray, as he crosses over the 60. Ray now with the drag. Oh, Ray, Ralph Fool. Ooh, just off to the left side. But a nice attempt there. And the clock goes tick, tick, tick. I think Alejandro might go ahead and just go ahead and control this one. They might get one more knock in. Now that's going to go ahead and end it. So three to one after our first and final chucker, our final leg of our six or nine chucker round robin for the 2023 Santa Rita Abierto. We'll be right back after commercial break. Foot golf, it's a kind of life and also it's a combination about golf and football. Uh, so I got into sport through social media. Someone approached me on Twitter and said, have you tried it? Um, I'd never heard of it at that point. So I went to my local course and tried it and just completely fell in love with the game. This is not as easy as it looks on your body. It's a lot of kicking. We don't normally kick this many hard kicks in soccer. Uh, for me, this and the U.S. Open are the two top U.S. tournaments. Um, it's something we all look forward to every single year. Great fun, and I think everyone will enjoy it when they try it. They just you can't not have fun. Um, when you set goals at the start of the season and you're able to achieve them at the end of the year, uh, I think I can speak for everyone and say when we, when we set goals and we make the sacrifices that we make, which a lot of people don't see, and then it all comes to fruition, it's, it's a good feeling. Literally live, breathe, football. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players fieldside and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything that goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. All right, here we go. Uh, preparing for our second chucker of our third leg. And congratulations to the Grand Champion Polo Club on the 16th anniversary. Uh, I am the Santa Rita Polo Farm, uh, one of the largest, most unique private 102 acre facilities. And I uh, watched a lot of polo out there. So if you had an opportunity to uh, to get out there, remember it is a private facility, but it is open when we do play games. Uh, remember about uh, playing summer polo. And, um, you know, we uh, it's a busy, fun place. I had the opportunity to, um, to interview Jason Crowder. And Crowder... He said everything was so much fun. He said everybody was uh, such a good vibe at the club. You got a good vibe. I like good vibe. And uh, everybody gets along so well. All sponsors and players are friends on and off the field. Even you're playing against somebody and they're cracking jokes with them at half 